And again, you're going to hear a lot of local content. You're going to see a lot of local content. And the stories that you want to be involved in. Because if you didn't want to be involved, trust me, you wouldn't be here. So good morning, and I hope we can enjoy today. Now, one thing I must say today, ask as many questions as possible. It is only a very foolish man who says he knows everything. So be free not to know and ask as many questions as possible as a way of getting your businesses, you know, getting the best out of today. So today's conference, of course, as you all know, is one that is, one, a requirement by the Petroleum Authority, and we'll be also hearing from the Petroleum Authority of Uganda, but also one that is meant for you to know at all times, in real time, what's going on and to see how you can best participate. So before we begin, as a tradition and as a requirement, I will start off with a safety moment. And the first safety moment will be done by the hotel staff. So Polycarp, if you can get me the hotel uh, uh, person who is in charge of the safety moment. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning once again. Let's be more lively. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, greetings from Prote Hotel. On behalf of the hotel, I'm Najib Mwonge, uh, banquet supervisor. So I welcome you at Prote Hotel. Please feel at home. I have my team at the back. They're serving. In case of anything, they can be of much help. But I'm here to take you through our security uh, brief, starting from uh, the, the assistance. We have the reception right away down here. When you're coming in, the moment you step into the hotel, on your right hand, besides the, rest, uh, the reception, in case you want to know more about our accommodation rates, our banquet uh, rates, you can please pass by the reception. They can give you an updated list of that. Uh, still uh, talking about uh, washrooms. We have washroom, washrooms just down as you step down where we are coming from, the staircases, on your left, you'll see a corridor. It walks you straight away to the washrooms. So in case you want to ease yourself and none of my team is nearby to direct you, please uh, step down. On your left hand, you'll be seeing the washrooms in the corridor. So more uh, in case of any fire or any fire outbreak, we have our assembly point in the lawns. It's our gardens, I think you saw it when you're coming in, but besides, is a, an open space. That's uh, our assembly point. So you can reach out to that, and you can be of much ho uh, helped when you go there. In case of internet assistance, I have my IT man, Mr. Winston, is at the back. In case you want anything to do with uh, internet or internet connections, in fact, it's right away here. Uh, for those who are looking for the internet passwords, they are pinned, if you, are, you can check on the walls, there's some there, there's one there, and there's even another one here. So those are so for the internet and the password Wi-Fi. For uh, information about our reservation today, I have the banquet manager, Madam Vivian, who's standing right away there. So she has an office down still as you, wash, or you walk to the washrooms. There's a banquet office, which is right beside uh, the GM's office. You can please contact her and she can give you much more information. In case of any other assistance, we are right at the back. You can please reach out to us. Thank you so much and have a good day. Thank you very much, Najib. Najib is a very interesting guy. He began by selling the hotel before telling us how safe we are. But um, <laughs> we'll be sure to pass by uh, the reception to hear the, or get the rest from you. Um, we're now going to get through another safety moment, and this one is by Polycup, and Polycup will be doing the safety moment on behalf of Sinok Uganda. Polycup. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Tony. Allow me to borrow the podium. Good morning, everyone. 
Poly Cup Segoa is my name. I'm part of the Sinok National Content Team. I'll be taking you through the safety moment for the day. Allow me to open uh, the presentation. Our safety moment for the day is about uh, Ebola. Uh, Ebola is a very deadly disease. I'm sure you're all aware of this. Uh, it has a, it has a uh, mortality rate of uh, between 25 to 90%. At the moment, uh, the, early, the early signs and symptoms of Ebola are, are, are a fever, a headache, muscle pain, and these progress to vomiting, uh, body weakness, sore throat, uh, bleeding from the body openings, uh, bloody diarrhea. Those are the, the signs of Ebola. And then uh, how can Ebola, uh, Ebola, Ebola can spread uh, through basically uh, infected body fluids. So basically you need to avoid uh, these fluids uh, through basically uh, touching the, the clothes of an infected person through the open wounds of, a, of the skin uh, feces, um, the vomit of uh, an infected person. So these are basically the, 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 the flus you need to avoid, to avoid getting infected with Ebola. How do we stay safe from Ebola? Of course, the basics, follow the standard SOPs. Uh, I notice most of you don't have masks, but these are things you need to, to, to do right now, especially that Ebola is all over the country. You need to be careful, wash your hands with soap, sanitize, and please, social distance. Um, for the health workers, at least uh, those basically who are, in the, who are engaging with Ebola patients, they are advised to wear masks and a full body suit, as you can see in the picture there. And, uh, and uh, of course, uh, use uh, clean, clean sterile oil equipment when engaging this with these Ebola patients. And uh, with those few few remarks on Ebola, allow me to stop there. Oh, and maybe lastly, at the moment, these are the current statistics. As of, uh, as of 9th of October, the new cases were four. Cumulative confirmed cases are 48. Uh, the contacts list for follow-up is 1,049. Recoveries, yes, we've had some recoveries with Ebola, are 14. Cumulative deaths are 17, and uh, the active cases on admission are, sorry, the active cases are 14, the cumulative deaths are 17, and the new deaths are 17. With that, allow me to stop there. Thank you. Uh, back to you, John. Thank you very much, Polycup. And now that really becomes or gets us into the conference. That gets us into the conference, and of course, we'll be started off with uh, oil and gas updates from the industry. And these oil and gas updates will be done by Petroleum Authority, who I am reliably told haven't yet made it, and we'll be making it shortly. But before we do that, and I guess as we wait for them, we'll get into our next uh, update, which is really welcome remarks and an update from the Kingfisher Project. And this will be done by my brother, Matthew Chaligonza from Sinuk Uganda Limited. Matthew. Thank you very much, Tony. Uh, our dear guests, I uh, would like to welcome you to this uh, quarterly supplier development engagement uh, that is supposed to be for Q2. Uh, as CINOC, uh, this theme was informed by the fact that uh, during the uh, national content, uh, conference by PAU earlier this year. We had our presenters uh, make uh, pre brief presentations at the uh, Serena Hotel and thereafter the Petroleum Authority of Uganda received quite a number of uh, uh, 
calls and inquiries uh, for more details about the opportunities available at the Kingfisher project. So we saw it fit to organize a dedicated supplier development conference that specifically talks to uh, the opportunities available uh, from our tier one contractors. As you will be seeing today, we are going to uh, mainly focus on uh, our main tier one contractors who will be uh, sharing with us the opportunities available in their different uh, packages. So um, uh, with that background, uh, I would like you to pay keen attention. Uh, like Tony said, uh, feel free to ask questions. Later on uh, in the afternoon, we shall have an interactive session where you will have an opportunity to uh, interact and have a conversation with these tier one contractors one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, we'll have uh, uh, the uh, Association of Oil and Gas Suppliers also help us and tell us uh, what needs to be done by our Ugandan or local contractors to maximize on these opportunities and to ensure that we uh, take advantage of them. So allow me now uh, to take us through uh, the Kingfisher project updates briefly and uh, thereafter we'll uh, have uh, uh, our presenters uh, come through. Yes. Uh, like you saw in the video that has been running, uh, the Kingfisher field is uh, approximately 15.2 kilometers long and covers an area about of about 33.8 kilometers. It lies uh, in what we call the former exploration area 3A, those that have been uh, around for long enough. And uh, uh, the first uh, well at Kingfisher was discovered in 2006. Uh, we have uh, at Kingfisher uh, uh, stock, stock tank oil in place, or oh, the discovery there is about uh, 570, um, 570 million barrels of oil uh, for those uh, three discoveries and uh, about 186 million barrels of oil recoverable. Uh, it's operated, of course, by Sinoc, as you're aware, but we are in a joint venture partnership with Total Energies and the UNOC. And the percentage is that UNOC has 15% and takes care of uh, government's commercial interests. Uh, Total has a percentage of 56.67 and Sinoc has a percentage of 28.33%. Uh, our development strategy is going to be phased in two phases, uh, where the, the, there will be Kingfisher oil field development, phase one. Then thereafter, we shall have what we call the Kaisotonia uh, tie-in uh, that will come through about seven years after fast oil. Uh, the main facilities that we are going to build at Kingfisher uh, that our dear uh, suppliers have already started on or embarked on are going to be uh, put on a total of four well parts and uh, we shall have one central processing facility. Uh, we shall have a water pump intake station, a supply base, a permanent camp, a safety check at the top of the escarpment, uh, temporary camps, 47.6 uh, uh, kilometers of feeder line. These are pipelines connecting uh, the different uh, well parts to the central processing facility and also uh, infield roads. As you can see, that's the, the, the layout. And this is the, these are some of the uh, uh, facilities that we shall uh, uh, that's how, when they are completed, that's how they would look like. 
Uh, allow me to take you through again the, the, the milestones and schedule, uh, milestones achieved and schedule for the Kingfisher project. On the November, on the 4th of November 2021, uh, Sinoc as a company took its own FID. Thereafter, on the 1st of February, the government of Uganda and, and together with the joint venture partners announced the FID officially. On the 11th of February, we had a groundbreaking ceremony and kickoff of the construction of the Kingfisher project with our, uh, our main contractors for PC1, which is a Ugandan company, Excel Construction, starting work. Uh, we are hoping by the end of 2024 to have uh, Kingfisher oil field ready to start production. And in the middle of uh, 2025, we shall expect the East African crude oil pipeline to come online and uh, the offloading of the first shipment of oil. So that in brief is the uh, milestone uh, uh, overview. As Kingfisher, we are very, very committed to sustainable use of the resource and also to environmental protection. As you can see, we are committed through uh, our, our um, ESIA, the Environmental Social Impact Assessment that was taken, and each project and each EPC has a separate ES ESIA done, and we ensure that there is undertaking of routine third-party environmental compliance audits, monitoring of all operations, and to ensure that we are environment, there's environmental accountability through continuous sharing of operations progress with the compliance regulatory bodies. So as Kingfisher, we take the environment very seriously. And our strategy uh, goes back from the e ESIA to, uh, that is at the exploration stage, to development production, until decommissioning stage. So environment is very, very key in our operations. Allow me to tell you that at Kingfisher, we also expect to contribute largely to national content through the employment of Ugandans. We are looking at uh, employment of us about 2,716 Ugandans, and these represent about uh, 78% of the total personnel at Kingfisher. And this will comprise of 280 directly employed by the company, that is Sinoc. Then the rest, about 2,436, will be employed by our contractors who are here present and are going to speak to us. We are also uh, doing quite a number of programs. One of the programs we do every quarter is the supply development workshops. This is one of them. Uh, next week, on the 20th, we shall be in Hoima to also speak to enterprise development, supplier development, to the regional suppliers in the Albertine region. And uh, we do this as a regulatory requirement and also as a commitment to ensuring achievement of national content. Uh, we also having this year an enterprise development program where we expect to work with uh, different stakeholders to have between 150 and 200 uh, SMEs further uh, equipped to be able to partake in the oil and gas uh, contracts. We shall have the community supplier development program that will help uh, our host communities and host uh, neighboring districts to be able to supply uh, items like food, uh, local available materials and help them uh, achieve compliance uh, both in QHSC and regulate, regulatory uh, compliance and teach them on how to be able to uh, participate in the oil and gas sector. We have a number of capacity development programs uh, as you know going on. 
one of which is the heavy goods vehicle drivers training. We have already uh, trained 140 uh, from, one, uh, from 2020, where we trained 70, and uh, 2021 we trained another 70. This year we are training 110, and this training is ongoing. It's currently about 70% about complete. Uh, it's going on in Hoima. Uh, we are also training teachers. Uh, in the past two, about the past three years, we have trained 126 teachers from Uganda Petroleum uh, Institute Kigumba, from UTC Kichwamba, and other vocational training institutes. Uh, this year, we are training another 84 teachers in different uh, certification programs that are geared to ensuring that they are able to also train and certify other Ugandans. We have also, in the past uh, three, four years, held the welders training and certification program, where we have trained 230 welders so far, right from 1G to 6G. And uh, this has been done uh, to ensure that our uh, Ugandans are able to get jobs to be able to participate in the oil and gas sector. We are also doing the ECITB uh, training. Uh, this is for civil uh, uh, engineers and civil uh, craftsmen to ensure that they get the necessary and required certifications and training to do work in the oil and gas. Um, these are some of the other interventions. Uh, other uh, interventions include the knowledge transfer initiatives where our uh, expatriates and local experts go to these Ugandan uh, universities and share knowledge and experience with the uh, uh, student engineers to be able to uh, share their experiences and pass on this knowledge uh, to have them ready when they come, come out of school to participate and uh, do work in oil and gas. And like you see, we have a, a national participation enhancement uh, being done through international scholarships. Uh, we have uh, annual internship pro uh, program that has been going on since 2013. We have uh, the supply development programs uh, under which the quarterly supply development uh, fora is happening uh, every quarter. This is one of them. We also offer training to both our workers and the contractors' uh, workers. We have uh, the knowledge transfer initiatives. Uh, we have awarded contracts to so many Ugandan companies. We also have the annual best students awards, to mention but a few, all uh, to enhance uh, national participation. So with that uh, brief, uh, uh, introduction to the project and a few uh, things that we are doing as you know in the national uh, content uh, uh, field. Uh, please allow me to stop here for now and welcome you once again to this quarterly supply development workshop. Thank you. Thank you very much my brother Matthew. Um, for many of you guys who've been hearing EPC what 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 we shall be able to break that down. Some of them I don't know. So the guys here will tell you what they are. But I think, um, again, as we wait for uh, our representative from Petroleum Authority, I think I'll just allow the show to go on the road. And we'll start off with the presentations from the different um, companies that are already supporting Sinuk in their operations. We're going to begin with um, a presentation from Excel and, of course, another one from uh, the China State Construction Engineering Company, uh, Corporation. And then, of course, um, uh, Koik and Sipek, and the King Oil Field Construction, and one also from Kosul, and another presentation from the Wero Industries, and of course, a man who has been in the trenches for a very long time, Emma Mugarura, who's well represented here, the Association of Uganda Oil and Gas Service Providers. So I'm just going to in, um, introduce the names and ask the people to come onto the stage, and you will present in that order as well. So the first presenter is going to be um, Sandra Atim. She is National Content Manager at Excel Construction. Sandra. Uh, guys, please clap. 
Right, Sandra Atim. The next presentation is going to be done by Brian Nasasira, who's the National Content Manager at China State Corporation Engineering uh, Company, or Corporation. Okay, and the next presentation is going to be made by Linda Nankumba. Linda Nankumba is the National Content Officer, Works Permits and Contracts, which is a JV of COIC and CIPEC. Linda? The next presenter is going to be Rita Kivumbi. Rita Kivumbi is the National Content Manager at the King Oilfield Construction, and she is going to be presenting on behalf of the company. Rita Kivumbi. The other presenter is going to be Mr. Dai Peng. Dai Peng is the Human Resources Manager at COSL. Dai. The next presentation after Dai's presentation will be from Mr. Stanley Diabahika. Stanley Diabahika will be presenting. Um, he is the general manager of the JV or the JV of Luero Industries and Oil HBP Science and Technology. Okay, if he's not yet here, we'll have that space then taken over by Emmanuel Mugarura. Emmanuel Mugarura is the CEO of the Association of Uganda Oil and Gas Service Providers. Emmanuel. So we'll begin with Sandra Atim. Sandra, if you could just come up and get us through the whole presentation situation. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my team Sandra from uh, Excel Construction Limited. I'm the National Content Manager, and I'll be taking you through uh, national content for PC1 project, that is procurement and construction for the Kingfisher Fridrilli Civil Work. Uh, Excel Construction Limited was formed as a JV between uh, Gomba Construction and uh, Madibani Group of Companies in uh, February 1992, and it's a 100% Ugandan company. Uh, the, map you, the map you see on this slide here shows our footprints in the country. So we've been all over the country. We've had projects in every area. Excel Construction Limited is uh, ISO 9001 certified. And uh, this system has enabled us to, to, to establish and develop, de develop processes and uh, put manuals in place, procedures, policies, which have ena enabled us to operate in the oil and gas sector. These are our certificates for ISO 9001 2015 and Ayush. Uh, for the scope of works of this project, this illustration that you see on the screen uh, shows the three well sites which uh, we are currently implementing. That is part one, part two, and part three. Uh, this is a pictorial overview of the scope of works. And the works that we've been undertaking include demolition works, earthworks, installation of conductor pipes, reinforced concrete works, uh, drainage works, and road works. These uh, photographs show some of the activities that are ongoing. Uh, when it comes to national content, uh, our first priority is given to the community where we are implementing the project. So this illustration here is very important because it, it, it shows you how we implement national content in the community and for the project. So our first uh, priority is given to the people in that area when it comes to sourcing of materials, manpower, and then uh, in the event that we don't uh, get the resources that we require, 
in those areas, we move on to the neighboring villages, and then we move on to the neighboring districts, if still we don't get the resources available in those areas. And in this case, the first priority is given to Nsunzu A, Nsunzu B, and Songa. Those are some of the villages in that area. Uh, when it comes to opportunities that are available for Ugandans, we have several, and uh, these are summarized as under employment. We have employment opportunities in this project for several Ugandans. And then we have a service provision of various categories. We have supply of locally available materials, trainings, and skills development for the people. When it comes to employment, uh, currently we've employed uh, approximately over 300 personnel, and uh, all these are Ugandan. And out of these, approximately 200 are from the community of uh, project implementation. And uh, for all the individuals who are interested in getting employed for this project with us, can drop the applications with our offices here in Kampala or in Jinja, or you can just visit our camp and drop your applications through the CLOs. And uh, you could send also through our email, that is HR at Excel Construction Limited. Uh, the illustration you're seeing here shows uh, a breakdown of the personnel that we have on ground. It shows the planned and uh, what we've currently achieved. If you look at what we had planned, right now we've exceeded that. We've employed a lot more than what we had planned. So those are great opportunities to the Ugandans. Another opportunity is service provision. And under service provision, there are subcontracted works. For example, we subcontracted the uh, installation of conductor pipes to East African piling, as you can see in this slide. And uh, uh, in addition to that, some other services such as waste management were also available security services, uh, medical services, all these are being provided from the community, the service providers within the area. There are supply opportunities for materials. So uh, these include materials such as sand, uh, materials such as uh, hard coal, natural gravel, agricultural products, all these are available as long as you meet the required standard. It's very important that you meet the standard because most times people think that uh, when you have the materials, you'll come and automatically you get, you get a, a, a contract to supply, but no, you have to meet the required standard. And then we've offered a lot of trainings to, to the workers who have been employed. So some of these workers are people from the community. They've benefited a lot from these trainings. And these trainings include both technical and HSC trainings. For example, machine operation trainings, first aid trainings, firefighting, and many others. These photos here show some of the training activities which were undertaken. This slide shows uh, HSC trainings that were undertaken, such as waste management, firefighting, First aid. Uh, the opportunities, sorry, those were the opportunities that we have available for, for Ugandans in this project. Uh, what SMEs need to do to participate in the oil and gas sector or to participate in this PC1 project include standards and certification. It's very important that you get your company certified, get your company register, registered, register with uh, the National Supplier Database as well. If you have uh, these standards in place, for example, the ISO 9001, 2015, you're able to streamline your documents, your processes, 
and this will help you a lot in implementation of the works in this sector. Uh, if you have policies in place, it will also guide your works, it will guide your activities, it will ensure protection of your workers. For example, if you have the sexual harassment policy, uh, anti-bribery, anti-corruption policy, employment policy, all these are very necessary. Uh, another important thing that companies need to understand is that you have to comply with legal requirements. These legal requirements include the oil and gas policy, petroleum exploration, development and production act, and many others. In addition to that, documentation is very important. When you're coming to work in this sector, you have to ensure that your documents are clear, you understand the documents of the client. For example, if you're coming to supply us with materials, there are several documents we are going to request from you. Uh, HSC management, uh, H-triple-S-E, that is health, safety, social, security, and environmental management. These are very important in this sector. So you have to ensure that you have strategies in place uh, to manage this. For example, you must have a security management plan in place to, to show us how you're going to handle your security. You must have a safety management plan to ensure that your workers are safe and uh, when you come to deliver all supply materials to our sites, you're not going to put other people at harm and also the products you're going to supply have to be in a safe condition or packaged in a safe manner. Uh, so safety, first of all, has to be included right away from the planning stage. If you do this, you put aside a budget for safety, you won't have challenges as you go on. And then we have our skills development to meet the client's requirements. In this case, the client, we are talking about us. If you're coming to supply materials or to work with us, you have to meet the requirements. For example, you have to train your workers to ensure that they are up to date with the necessary skills. You have to conduct regular trainings, drills, workshops on various activities. And then uh, uh, it's, uh, it's an advantage to local companies, especially small companies, to join, to, to join to make joint ventures. If you form joint ventures, you'll have a, a higher capacity and a higher stand in uh, uh, meeting the requirements of these projects. Uh, briefly, this is uh, all that we have on opportunities available to Ugandans in the PC1 project. Thank you very much, Sandra. That was very precise. And I guess from her presentation, you could hear clearly a number of themes coming out. Standards, standards, standards. You know, many of us want to get into these opportunities, but we ignore our standards. The other thing that I think is also interesting to hear are the policies. And when we talk about policies, there are several policies that are very important. When I joined the oil and gas sector as a national content manager years ago, I was very amazed to find out that there was also a malaria policy. Now, as a Ugandan, you might be wondering, why do you need a malaria policy? Remember, the people who are coming to work with you or for you are people who are probably not interacted with malaria. So policies are very important, and it's important for you to have them in your business. You'll find a guy trying to do business as usual, forgetting that this sector is not business as usual. So thank you, Sandra, for highlighting that. Policies, standards, and all of that. So the next presentation will be made by Brian Nasasira. And again, Brian will also be highlighting opportunities available for suppliers like yourselves in his area of work. Brian is the National Content Manager at the Chinese State Construction Engineering Corporation. Brian, before you present, I think you should also greet us in Chinese, just to show us that you have integrated very well. Thank you.
running in front. Um, to moist the brand, that's uh, the national content manager for China State Construction Engineering Corporation. So, as national content manager, my biggest job is to ensure that a Ugandan puts bread on the table from that oil and gas sector. So if I hear that Okero paid fees out of the oil and gas sector, bought a shirt out of the oil and gas sector, I go as a winner. And to that moment, I need to first thank Mr. Matthew, Mr. Jerome from the Sinoc team for that big job. All Ugandans are in that sector because those people, that group, chose to put their bodies on the line for us Ugandans to benefit. Thank you, Mr. Matthew and Jerome for that. So the presentation I'll make, I'll take a surgical analysis to what actually small and medium enterprises can get, leaving out the complex bit of the project. The Sinoc people have explained what that means. So I'll just show you what, because I've realized everyone here is a supply of different things. So that's why I've taken uh, that little breakdown of everything that we are going to, to do. Excuse me. So that will be the outline. Uh, I'll first of all show you the introduction, the scope, as you see. Because uh, if you get to know the scope and the stages, then you know you be how you know how to marry those available opportunities with the phases. Then, as a supplier, you also know what you're capable of delivering on that table. So China State, as you see, is a construction company established in the People's Republic of China. It's also registered in Uganda as well. Uh, away from the oil and gas sector, they've done projects, the Karuma famous project, construction of some buildings in Makerere. I think I was a student when they were finishing that building. But today, I only want to give you China State in the oil phase. Uh, so, as China State, we are called EPC2. Now, as to how the EPC2 came about, that is Mr. Matthew and the team. But we call ourselves the EPC2 package. Now, uh, we operate in the Albertine region. Uh, this, the other players, uh, Mr. Matthew had already elaborated on them. So these are the other players in the in the field, Total and the likes. So, as EPC2, our main focus will be on construction of the permanent camp. Now, remember, the other presenter. Of, from Sinoka told us that this permanent camp will house over 200, 300 people. So we shall deal with the permanent camp, construct a supply base. Now the supply base is for storage of the materials and equipment, for drilling and everything. That's what we shall do. The permanent camp, of course, is a, a homestead, call it. So then we shall also be in charge of construction of the safety check station, which is at the escarpment from the pictorial display that came in earlier. Uh, although we've not, we didn't construct the temporary camp, but we occupied one of them, but also manage 
the work uh, manage one of it and ours specifically is the western camp and then also construction of these infield access roads now as this enterprises around here when you see this these are just opportunities these are not just safety check station these are opportunities because all these need supplies and that's why i've been unequivocal enough on this to show you that actually we are still working on the safety check station so assure you me we haven't engaged the permanent camp and we haven't engaged the supply base in other words the opportunities are still available and up for grabs. So then, how are we going to flow with our work? Uh, the work flows in such a way that we shall start with setting up the boundaries. Uh, the earthworks, the construction people may be at ADDM with that term. Then the construction will begin. Then the electrical wiring, in fact, when I saw this, uh, I saw a colleague from Patro, is it Patronix? So there you go. There is, there, there is the opportunity. We shall have electrical wiring. The plumbing, I saw someone introducing themselves from a plumbing company, something like that. Then the painting. So these are all opportunities. Now, that's how we shall flow. Now, as you can see from the upper bit, we are actually, we finished the setting out of the boundaries. We are now still doing, we haven't even started all these th other things below. Now, now, in a nutshell, if without generalizing, because the danger with generalizing is that you leave out some people. That's why I told you I'll take a surgical look at the opportunities, not a general rule. Now, this is what we want at those different stages. This is what is required. And tell you me, everyone, there is a supplier for each and everything there in this country of ours. That's how blessed our country is actually. So we shall need fuel because we have to run either the cars, the, the generators. We shall need emergency services. In fact, uh, yes, last week I was in a meeting with, it's called Chikube Local Council in Hoima over supply of some the ambulance. Inspections are uh, one thing about actually even the previous presenter brought about is something to do with standards and Matthew or oh, every time Mr. Jerome from Sinok sends here an email the first thing is standard 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 so that's why every project is equipped with inspectors so these have to inspect every any car you're going to use uh, when I'd just gone to the to the site, I saw them inspecting my, my, is it, they are called PPs, the, what the local man would call an over. And I was wondering, this is my cloth, why are you inspecting it to the standard? But that is how the oil works. Everything has set standards that you have to follow. Then the security services. Now, whereas we have the oil and gas police, of course, under the law, under our constitution, the mandate of security and what we shall talk about the police, the UPDF, which is there. But now at a microscopic level of these projects, we have uh, these local security personnel guarding our storage facilities and what. Now, for example, China State, we need over, uh, according to our plan, we shall need over 50 security personnel. But then, Again, Sinok will ask for a company. You don't just hand pick a person from the street to come and do your security. So, plus other things, foods and beverages, catering. And then you have to be aware that under the national content regulations of 2016, to be specific from regulations 9, 10, 11, 12, now, 
you meet something to do with goods that are ring fenced, which this, the national content manager from Sinocard hinted on. So some of these goods, like catering, these should be provided specifically by Ugandan companies. So you can't get a foreign company to supply catering. So that means any enterprise here from the food sector, the opportunities are all about all there. Then clearing, forwarding, as you can see, the list is long. Now, there are some that are indirect. Some here are direct and some are indirect. Now, for example, mobile money services. Uh, well, as we may not employ a mobile money personnel to the camp, but we earn our cash down there. And you remember, you're in Hoima, but family is in Kampala. We need to send cash this side. Now, I've seen the local people in Hoima benefiting from this. Actually, we transact very well, better than even the local people there, because we earn somehow good, enticing money. So these are also indirect services that you can benefit from the waste management. So some are direct and some are indirect, and that is the spirit. Like I've told you, my major goal is so long as Mujisha, Okero, Peter, Walusimbi takes bread home. I'll be a winner. Now, now that is the other ones, as you can see, there were also opportunities. Now, there are those opportunities that are tagged to only construction. Because remember, we are a construction company. So away from the other opportunities, we talked about transport and what, fuel. There are those that are just unique to our own nature of operation or modus operandi in the oil field. Now, we being a construction company, we deal with the normal things, cement, aggregate. Now, all this, this is not just cement as the word. This is an opportunity. It is a full-blown opportunity to supply that cement. So, all those, because we shall have to use them in where we operate. So all these are opportunities for everyone. Concrete blocks, paint, waterproof, the generators, the pumps, because you have to pick water from the Albert treat and then supply. Because I may not know which enterprise is here, but once you see a commodity that you're capable, that you can wrestle down in the end of the day, please, that was the purpose of the display. Now, some of you may know, may hesitate to engage, wondering what do they offer for this. Now, this was just a snapshot, just a flip, just a test on what we are capable of offering for this. Now, imagine these are our estimated amounts that we could offer, or our estimated expenditure on some of these goods. Uh, allow me make it clear that the amounts are in dollars. Now, look at steel. Our estimated expenditure on this steel is 800,000 USD dollar, you know. Formwork, concrete. We have one good million of dollars to spend on concrete. And as you can see, the status is that some of these things we haven't even acquired them. We are inquiring, still in the market. And I'll show you how you can come there. So the opportunities are actually there. And that's why I think we still need to thank the Sinoc team for organizing this. Because I've seen one of the contractors, people I engage, their problem is that because they are fed on rumors and these border border rumors of the oil is already gone, the opportunities are already out. So they don't even ask you out because they think everything has been supplied and everything. There's one who told me we made cars taking oil away. So what are you doing in Hoima? So members, I've come to put your hearts to rest. These opportunities are there. And we are still looking for the people, as you can see. And the money is really 
happy money. The money is smiling, as you can see. Then, so those are the estimated expenditures. Now, and other subcontractors. Now, I've, this is still from the other big list, but trying to show you either the amounts and what we shall need. Now, and what we may not, may have to spend on them. Now, this subcontract of works. We are ready to subcontract some works and we and remember the national content regulations on this aspect is that the Ugandan company must take first priority. Even where you don't find these goods in Uganda, that's why I encourage these enterprises. Even when you don't, you can't offer these commodities. Remember, the law still protects you. Specifically, I think it's Regulation 12. The law still protects you. If you can't offer this, and it's not available in the country, even the foreigner who's going to offer has to enter a joint venture. And he tell you me the joint venture you're holding a minimum of 48%. That is very interesting. So you're not losing at any point. You still benefit. Uh, and as you can see, the suppliers, all we need are companies registered in the national supplier database. Or if they are professionals like inspectors, Ugandan citizens, and then those entities. That is simple. So we have uh, some we have not, like those ones. And truthfully, those that we have given out, I've indicated, like now we have also an East African International. We subcontracted them and we signed a contract with them to do the some earthwork. But there's still a lot of that money, 400, 800, 1 million dollars, 3 million, all up for grabs. Members who are seated here, these are opportunities. These are opportunities. Every time, for me, when I was making the presentation, I kept imagining I should form a company for electro what interior decoration. I form one for waterproof because all the opportunities were open. Now, uh, still almost the same scenario. Now, you can see the money we are willing to spend. Now, for example, uh, there is a lot, but let me just pick number five. Uh, imagine. Uh, our security. Uh, we've signed. I've uh, just that is last week, I think. I managed to sign a contract with Pyramid Security Group. Now, now, when when you look at this contract, the contract says that it is two millions per month per guard. This looks a little superfluous, but actually it's a reality. Now, so you have, we've just, we keep bringing the guards according to the need for the labor. But you have a Ugandan who's taking home two millions. Maybe if he removes the taxes here and there, he will take back home something like 1.5. That is a Ugandan benefiting. That is an opportunity. That is an opportunity. Just that. And that is just security. So that's how we deal with them. I also signed a contract with the, an insurance contract with Return. And that is the amount of money that we signed with them. Now, even this small, we have two different suppliers of these medical services. But one of them, just to hire local doctors and nurses, who only come occasionally. Uh, we signed a contract and they were spot on. I liked it when I was in their meeting. When they start, they said they wanted a hundred, they took a hundred thousand US USDs. But you could see the energy. And one of them told me, you see, you people, if we don't benefit, then it means we are not Ugandans, then why was the oil here? So we are trying to choose such things. You give them the contract and the Ugandan benefits and they bless the project. Some of us believe in such that once the Ugandans are happy, the project is blessed. 
Another interesting thing that the enterprises here need to take note of. See how we have our localization ratio. Now, these are the materials that we are purchasing. That is the amount we estimate. Uh, the subcontracted works, or even with our subcontractors, remember we still micromanage their purchase of items. That's the amount they are going to they are going to spend plus that. Then employment and training. Now, when you look at this, 83.67, that is when we're making the plan, submitting it to Petroleum Authority, is at a local basis. 83.6 is at a local basis. Now, actually, since then, up to now, we have actually increased it. Now it is actually at 90%. Because we're advised by uh, Mr. Jerome and the, the, the national content team in Sinop, that actually even these other things we thought we had to import and what, they actually available in Uganda. We just didn't take a keen look in the market. And that's why I'm happy that you're here. Because... When you hide far away from us, sometimes we can't dream of these things. Because the people, I want to be sincere with you, the people we operate with, they also have a brother in Hong Kong. There's a Jack Chan who's also supplying these things. So surely they wouldn't fail to be tempted to make that good witch at phone call or back home to for cement. But looking into the market, we have actually increased the percentage over 90 percent now that means as a local company here you're playing with the 90 percent you're offering to that tune everything is almost so now almost 100 percent is from here and for the local enterprises that is that is that is a good way to go so now of course as i promised i took a micro scopic approach or surgical approach that's why i even forgot to add sandals here i needed to show you everything that is needed because when you move through chikubo those of us who are in kampala we who are proud ugandans here we know the people who sell sandals there and we need them we know the people who sell soap and we need the soap now it may look as a pair of sandals but my dear at the oil standards, the, the money is a little happy than the normal money in the Nakasero here. Then at the same time, the numbers are many. So it starts with one pair of sandals and it metamorphosizes into something big. You see? So that's why I've also taken a keen look at these small, small things. Beddings. So if our camp, for example, our China State, China State, we are supposed to be at 285. Imagine those beddings. If you got a supplier for just bed sheets, blankets, mattresses, that would be good money. That would be good money. So, but once you don't bring it out, these people still think for us, we think in cement, machines, cars, and what? Yet a Ugandan can benefit even from that small scale. For example, over those, those beddings have engaged someone and the toiletries from Chikube is, I think, a mayor. He has a very big shop. He calls it a supermarket, although it isn't to the standard of the supermarket. He has named it a supermarket. But tell you me, he has all these things. And he's looking into money. Every time he sees me, he says he looks at money. And that's what a Ugandan should look up to. Uh, now, so members, that, those are the opportunities. As many, the list is long. For you, all I want you to do is look through that list and tell me, me I can die with this fuel. The blanket, I'll die with it, I'll supply it. Then we negotiate out. out. I'll show you how you come there. Now, how do you harvest these opportunities? Take a look. These are normal, normal things. And of course, first, with all due respect, appreciate again the previous presenter who had hinted on the certificates 
Now on top of that, because the standards in oil don't actually differ. They are set by our main person. So look at this. All we have to do is prove this. So I expect, of course I don't expect a company to come to us without a certificate of incorporation. How are you operating? Anyway, we don't want ghost companies. So now, the other thing I'm very keen over is social security requirements. You don't pay NSSF for your workers. I'm also trying this side to tell a fellow Ugandan benefit for your eating their NSSF. There we don't do business. Because remember, as I started, my role is to ensure that that Ugandan gets cake or bread from oil and gas. The good market conduct, all that, as you can see. If you show that, that could be the minimum. But on top of that, uh, that at least should come out. All companies must be in NSD, as you can see. But I need to put a disclaimer here. Uh, whereas we are alive to the fact that the oil and supply in the oil and gas sector is should be registered with the national supplier database, and uh, uh, it's a little tear causing that in our oil and gas sector down there in Hoima, there are some suppliers who have not beaten this standard. But remember, we have an aspect of the community should benefit as the previous presenter also hinted on it, the first search from the local community. So, for example, my may have told you about who's to give me bed sheets. He asked me what is NSD? How do I drive to get there? Is it a person I meet him, call him? So it is still problematic at that level. So we are trying to find a compromise on how we push the standards, but also ensure that even the shopkeeper who has not reached at the status of the NSD benefit from this. Another example is foods. Uh, I engaged suppliers of fish around, because we are in Lake Albert here, so it is, it is reasonably foreseeable that fish will be abandoned. And the cabbage, dodo, nakati, these people wanted to supply, but they asked me when they called, they told them NSD, and so they were asking me who's NSD now. Do we need to talk to him in person? Do we? So that's why I've we try to compromise. So whereas it must be, you must be in NSD, but at some level we have tried to bend law, especially when it comes to the local community people to, to offer them opportunities. Because again, again, I insist the main target is that Mujisha Okero should take bread home from the oil and gas sector. Because it is not his problem that he's, he doesn't have a company to put in NSD. So then from there, uh, this, is, this is the normal procurement process. The companies, you've been taking tenders, so you've engaged this. So that's what we go through. And then we shall award you the, the contract. And then this is how we award, if you wanted to know. But why I brought this is to, to at least cause a smile on Matthew's face or Mr. Jerome that national content takes 10% of the score as recommended by the law. So once you're a local company in those scoring boards, you have a 10 if you comply with that. So that is very encouraging, very big score, 10%, 10. And then lastly, as you can see, we remain committed to creating a conducive atmosphere for the small and medium enterprises in Uganda. This is through availing leveled ground for every enterprise to equally compete in the supply of any goods and services. The, companies, the company intends to uphold the spirit of national content regulations and any other laws to ensure that Ugandan citizens, entities benefit from the oil and gas sector. If that can happen, I will sleep happily. Thank you, members. All right. Thank you very much, Brian. So if you're an Okelo here, it is not you they're talking about. So don't get overly excited. You still have to do the things that uh, he's talked about. And I'll just take it back probably to uh, 
this slide here on qualification. Because a lot of the time when we are working on bids or filling out bids and applying for all of these opportunities, we forget to understand where to put emphasis. We go on stories about our families, our grandmother, father, and forget that this is what happens. Qualification, the technical criteria, financial criteria, and of course, local content. Now, by virtue of you being a Ugandan company, it doesn't mean that you should take local content less seriously. Local content should actually be your opportunity to score as much marks or as many marks as possible, rather. So think about that criteria as you go through your bidding process. So if you're Okelo and you're here, just know at least you have a good starting point in uh, the evaluation process as far as the company is concerned. So now we're going to move to the next presentation, and this presentation will be made by uh, Ms. Linda Nankumba. Ms. Linda Nankumba is the National Content Officer, Works and Permits and Contracts for a JV, which is that of COOEC and CIPEC. She'll be coming to speak to us about the opportunities for suppliers in EPC3, and this is the King Fisher Oil Field Treatment Facilities. Linda, the stage is yours. My name is Nankum Belinda, and I'm the National Content Officer for CC, CO, COEC, and CPEC Joint Venture. Uh, I want to thank the organizers of this event, and I want to thank everyone that is here. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'm here to present to you the opportunities for the supply of goods and services for the Kingfisher project that we have as CCJV. Um, my presentation is going to be uh, really brief and precise and straight to the point, and it's divided into Three, as you can see, I'm going to give you a brief introduction about the EPC3 project and CCJV, and then I'll talk to you about our upcoming opportunities. Then I'm going to give my closing remarks. Um, as you can see on the screen, um, this is how we are going to operate. Um, we're going to have a temporary camp put up. Um, it's going to house about 1,000 people or more. It's going to accommodate more than 1,000 people in it. And we have the CPF, the Central Processing Facility, that is going to do the, that's where the oil is going to be stored or kept and processed and everything that concerns the oil. Um, this It's going to give us about 40,000 barrels of oil per day. That's the target that we have. And then we have the water intake stations. We have the well pads. And these well pads have about 31 wells that are going to store the oil also. Then you have the pipelines for water and oil. Um, I'm going to give you a brief, brief, brief introduction about CPEC and no, about COEC and CPEC. Yes, uh, it's a joint venture between. Um, 
in full COEC is the China. Sorry about that. Um, it's the China Offshore Oil Engineering Company. And CPEC is the China Petroleum Engineering and Construction Corporation. We are registered by the Registrar of Companies of Uganda. That means we, we are taxpayers. And COEC is located in Nakasero on the Renzori Towers in Kampala. And CPEC is, is in Kololo um, in Kampala. And briefly, I'm going to talk to you about the opportunities that we have. Um, we have already put a tender in the newspapers. It's been published. It was published on the 6th of October. And the deadline is on the 20th. Yeah, you could go and check out in the New Vision papers. Um, it will end on the 20th strictly. Anything that goes beyond that, um, we cannot have you work with us because we we are we have standards and we have procedures that we follow and it ends at 5 p.m. Now that subcontracting was for the civil works for the CPF and the well parts package two where we are doing where we will need people to do supply of things like the things that help in the cement equipment foundation and the building works. As you can see, that is a scope of works. Um, we have heavy works that are going on at that project of Kingfisher that include excavation, backfilling. There's a lot of like, very, very many things that are going to take place. Uh, in there, we also have the roads. We'll be doing roads. Um, and as I was growing up, as a young child, we used to be we used to be told that if there is a project going on in a different area, I think that was primary. They kept telling us the jobs are going to come up, the the roads are going to be constructed, this and this. So now we are here. If you can do this with us, if you qualify, as I'm going to tell you how we shall go about the applications and everything, if you qualify, please come through subcontracting for the cement equipment foundation and building works um, this is the tender that was published in the newspapers as you can see um, please you can go back and look through it and then you can see where you can work with us the other subcontracting works that we have are for the mechanical works for steel and the water, the steel structure installation, the water installation, the deep well, deep well are not grounded installation. Um, this is the scope of works for that. And it's yet to be advertised. It has not yet been put out there, but please you can just keep monitoring and in a few we shall put it out there. And if you qualify, that's our scope of works, you can come and work with us. So um, I'm going to talk about how you have to qualify. Um, you should be registered in the National Suppliers Database. Um, it's very, very vital. This National Supplier Database, uh, I think it goes for up to three years. So sometimes uh, documents are received and people are like, they are, it has almost like expired or something, but it has to be valid, up to date. You have to be validated in there so that we can work together. Um, if you are to subcontract or do any work, if we are to subcontract you or you, do any, you want to do any work with us, you're supposed to have been certified by the Petroleum Authority of Uganda. If you don't do that, then it, it will be kind of hard 
of course maybe we can find a way but it will be hard you have to be certified by the petroleum authority of uganda then you must have completed about a few projects like three first first to be able to work together of that amount of dollars for each contract because this is big 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 work yeah and then the be that you should be in good operating status and financially stable to be able to meet these scopes of work. Uh, other, those were the big, big works, the mechanical and then the civil. Now we go to these, the normal, normal works that where we are inviting other people that may not maybe be able to do the, to engage in the big, big works. I think that's where the small medium enterprises come in. Uh, we are going to talk. We are going to take the bid, like bids if people are to come in for temporary camp operation management, and then we'll do the canteen operation management, the living material supply, and the office stationary administration. Now this stand up for those ones has been published already, as you can see. Um, it was put in the new vision too, and the deadline is on the 17th emphasize that yeah on the 17th we close at 5 p.m please come and work with us if you qualify for any of that these other ones down the security services the camp storage treatment the training services we are yet to let you know the other services that we need from the people are the local purchase of equipment and materials um the other construction materials that we may need are concrete there's a um, motor stand there's steel and bar you can take your time and read through they are very 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 many they are very very many you can read through them and then you can see if you can work with us in any of them please you come through and we shall do business um we also have all these, all those at the screen, everything that you see there, still under the local purchase of equipment and materials. The padlocks, the brush, the rollers, the tool kits, uh, room cutting discs, installation tabs. I'm sorry, I'm rushing. I want to make it very brief. The details, I think, then avail the details the CNAP team because they should be having this. Um, everything is in here, as you can see on the screen. Sorry, I'm rushing through because there are very many. All right. Now, if you want to apply, besides those other qualifications that I, talk about, I talked about, you, and, and when you are done and you qualify for all those, kindly send your expression of interest to um, CCJV suppliers at 163.com and we'll receive them and then we shall communicate on everything. Then these deadlines shall be observed, like I said earlier on. They have to be, like you have to be, you come in time because we work in time. We have a target to accomplish and anything that is to slow the process or, or what, we may not really comply, but we need to work on time. Attender offices for CCJV are in Kololo, around Nyonyi Gardens. Yeah, you can call us and we make appointments and we do business. Uh, my closing remarks are we want to tell you that we are dedicated to doing work that is of standard we are we have a reputation we we've been in about 30 countries we are in about 30 countries in the world as coexipec and we are 
in Africa, we are in Algeria and we are in also Sudan and Uganda. And we have a reputation that we've kept of doing good, good work. So we emphasize quality. If you are to work with us, we need someone who is going to provide quality stuff because this is a very sensitive venture where we have to a sensitive like industry, the oil and gas. So if something is provided and it's not of standard, it may not it may cause problems. We've seen like um, we've seen accidents that happen in the different sectors and all that and this is a very sensitive one so we have to work with people that are going to give us quality things so that they can work with us like they can last as we do the work and we don't have to repeat or cause accidents because of something that was not of quality so we emphasize that thank you very much Thank you, Linda. That's been Linda Nankumba. She's the National Content Manager at, uh, at, uh, at COIC and CIPIC, the consortium or the JV of the two companies. Uh, we, we've also been also informed that our representative from the Petroleum Authority is here with us. That's Mr. Justin Kiwanuka, who will be speaking about the opportunities from a regulatory point of view, but also to give you clarity on the questions that you probably have. I know many of you have heard my brother Brian talk about NSD and you're also wondering what NSD means. It's a national supplier database and he'll be able to share with you how you can uh, get onto that. So our next presentation is from Rita Kivumbi. Rita Kivumbi is the National Content Manager, the King Oilfield Construction Group. I'm a little bit disappointed that all of these guys are not greeting us in Chinese. I don't know what they are learning from their employers, but um, I hope you can come up and say ni hao and we move ahead. So, <laughs> Rita Kivumbi. Ni hao. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. My name is Arita Chibumbi. I'm the National Content Manager for the Aichin Oilfield Construction Group. And I'm here to present to you the opportunities that we have in our company. I'll give a little overview of what we are going to do through. This is what comprises of my presentation, the content. I'm going to give a little brief introduction about the project under Daichin. I'm going to give you the opportunities in terms of supply of goods and services, the different things that we have there. Then also as much as we are suppliers in terms of companies, but we also have employment opportunities as Daichin. And then also the capacity training or building of the staff that we intend to employ and how we shall achieve that. Just a small introduction about our company, Daichin Oilfield Construction Group, is the company that has the package for as related to CNOC and our, it relates to the feeder line projects that starts from Bubuka to, to, to Kavale National Park. And this is a road this is a pipeline that is a 48 feeder line pipeline that we are supposed to construct under 66 kV power transmission line related to the facilities. Our basis of national content as Daichin, we rely on the National uh, Petroleum Authority regulations of the national content. We are very key to be compliant with the, uh, with the, national, with the petroleum regulations and we want to be 100% to that. We also based on the contract between Daichin and Sinok on the terms and conditions that are stated in the contract. And most of these terms between the, actually both of them for the Petroleum Authority and the, for Sinok, 
they are all to sub to protect all of us to protect the ugandan companies to ensure that we have something out of it and our role as the national content persons is to ensure that our companies also get something out of it to ensure that compliance is made our strategy as daichin to ensure that we are compliant mostly to the regulations we emphasize the use of local goods and services which are supposed to be provided by the smes by the ugandan companies the ugandan human resource basically ugandan people as the children of the soil eh? and then also utilize and capacity building of ugandan human resources this is through the trainings to ensure that there is knowledge transfer to ensure that people earn this capacity building today i can't mean as a fresher tomorrow i have to go like a manager or a boss so there is capacity building and we enter we ensure that we do that then when you look at this field of the green these are the ring faced works and services that are stated by the petroleum authority to ensure they are offered by ugandan companies and we know we can provide these things however even in case the different uh, contractors or epcs tender out their works and services and you find that maybe the ugandan company doesn't have the capacity there is always a requirement to make a joint venture with the Uga with an international company and always the ugandan company is given priority to ensure at least they first consider them and in this joint venture like my colleagues say they have 48 percent which is a big chunk in our 100 percent 48 it's a big chunk our implementation start, implementation way is to ensure these are done is to ensure that there's transparent and ethical sourcing and recruitment of us the staff that are under the chain and then we also prioritization of the sourcing and still of the local people when you go down to the kingfisher project there are those local people we also want to give them opportunities not only that those other people that you know there are those other works to ensure that they also get bread like brands have then also advertising opportunities depending to the value thresholds differ but depending to the thresholds we advertise these advert these opportunities in the national medias or different websites but we all find means of how these opportunities reach out to people and we do advertise that and also we always we shall always make sure that there is rigorous monitoring and reporting of national content commitment of daichin to CINOC and Petroleum Authority. Now going to the opportunities that we anticipate in this project of EPC4. What you see on the slide here, these are the different opportunities that we hope to have, but this is not the only list that we, these services are yet to keep changing, increasing, depending to the need and the activities like you know, circumstances, but at least you know, in the, in the operations, we, we look out to leasing services of the SUVs, pickups, and other vehicles in transportation, of staff, of other materials, depending on whatever requirement that is are available. But we tend to have leasing of these services, then also leasing of excavators, cranes, loaders, and other construction materials that are huge in terms of equipment. And these are things that are done with SMEs supporting these things. Uh, the assessments of environmental and social impact assessments, these are researches or works that are done in the field there, and they are given to companies that are registered, that are supposed to be Ugandan. Still, you will relate this with the, the ring first services that I read said, and these are going to be provided by 100% Ugandan companies, according to our commitment. When you look at security, it's supposed to be done by Ugandan com companies, epidemic prevention goods. Epidemic prevention goods, you look at the, at the site there, you find people get sick, people prevention, you know, you look at uh, maybe, I'll, I'll look at sanitizer, I'll look at masks, I'll look at uh, nets, mosquito nets, I'll look at those prevention things that, pre but in bulk, we are looking at things in bulk. The internet provision services, uh, we look at the living waste, wastewater and construction water treatment services, the office supply procurements, uh, and you know the services, all the, 
like we are going to look in the next slides the different things that we shall be doing they will need these different services or goods to be provided we have the we call them the living goods but they're more like consumables uh, but they detail out when they tender out even when they give out the tender depending to the requirement or rfp or rfp these doc these particular items are detailed but we just categorize them as consumables or living goods procurements we need food procurement, insurance of the, of the insurance services, fuel, fuel procurement, custom clearance and forwarding, then construction and steel, steel structure materials. These are majorly, like you know, construction is a huge, huge thing. So that different things, I may not break them down, but the different things that are related to the construction, there's bulk pro material procurement, uh, in terms of furniture, you see these tables, not only tables, chairs, beds, what? These are different things. They are bulk and they will be used. There's gas procurement, this, the gas that will be using the construction of the pipe, you know, the drilling thing, the people from PPEs, the gears, all those things. They are very, very good things. And these are different services and goods that we shall do. Uh, when we look at this slide, we are looking at the subcontracting, subcontracting services that we intend. And with these ones, we, they are quite a bit big, but detailed, and uh, they have a, they can also be broken down. But these ones are going to be subcontracted to other subcontractors, and they are going to be only done through open bidding. If I can take you back through this, for this one, they could vary in terms of tendering. They could because of the thresholds or the values but with these ones i'll let you know how we can all get to know about all these but with these ones they will all be done through media open bidding to the public all of them those registered those not registered they'll all be able to see these items but there are requirements of course you know criteria the requirements that you should that you should ensure that you meet to be to even be shortlisted or to put in the evaluation procedures. So we look at the geography survey and topography survey for detailed design. Uh, this was done. I think this was already awarded. Currently we have the temporary camp construction that includes the land surface leveling, the road, water supplying and drainage system, electronic system, warehouse facilities, caravan installation. And it is, you find this, even this package alone number two, it is huge different different SMEs can be incorporated into this particular this particular uh, subcontract of this particular works whereby in case it is given out yes even the subcontracted company can work on you because this is something that we ensure that even our subcontractors have to contract the SMEs that are Ugandan companies then we'll have the RRW right of way clearing and breading of the pipeline route. You remember it is a 48 kilometer, it's a very huge thing. So the right of way, the clearing, the grading, everything, we all do that. Currently we are in the preparation procedure, preparation process. Implementation is the big mother, you know, but all this, these are opportunities that are there. When you look at number four, we have the pipeline and cable trenching, backfilling, fine replacement, surplus, soil and rock disposal, road and road river crossing, landform restoration. Like you find this category has different, different sub, subdivided things in it, whereby different SMS can tap in and also have opportunities in this. And then we have also the civil war construction of the valve chamber, that is the pipeline station one and the central processing facility areas. Those are some of the things that we intend, but these are all going to be done, they are done publicly by all, all companies. Unlike some of them, like I said, depending to the value or the thresholds, they differ, like the tendering, tendering method but it all happens to the threshold, but still supposed to be given by Ugandan companies, as long as they are in the rings first. And even when they are not, Ugandan companies are given priority. 
even in the joint venture. When I look at some of them that we've so far done, so far, uh, the geographic survey it has been awarded to Petrolink. When you look out for Petrolink, the training center that we are constructing, like under the temporary camp, we shall be training the staff, both management and technical, to ensure that they gain more knowledge on the on this thing. You know, oil thing is new in Uganda, so we have to empower to enrich our knowledge so that we prepare for the future. And even these expatriates are not going to stay in Uganda forever. They will leave us to run it all for them. And then we also, after the basic training of their own job, or the training, or the, to see out, we look out for, to improve our, our, our skills, we look out for those key particular people that are really good in their works to advance them. In this way, we shall still tender out, find different uh, training institutes, pay out tuition monies, and implement. And these people will also be trained to build up more from the basic one to the improved version of the training. And that is a very good thing. Uh, just as I'm closing about my own thing, I would urge, like my other colleagues have said, well, especially for the SMEs that are looking at big chunks, the mandatory thing we look out is the NSD criteria, NSD registration, National Data Supply Database. And you know, to be even registered, those other certificates are loaded in the NSD. Petroleum Authority has to approve, has to verify, and it is more like the pre-qualification, it's more like the pre-qualification route to this oil and gas industry. So if you Pre, if you're pre-qualified by NSD or by Petroleum Authority, at least that is a very good tick. Then someone who's not yet pre-qualified but wants to do a, a business. But if you're pre-qualified, if you, you've submitted all those uh, documents that are legal, at least you, you're, you're, you're much better on a better route. And then also I would add, I don't know, but uh, as much as we follow the Petroleum Authority, let, us, let the company get to know you. Competition is high even in different industries. Competition is high. And I want to thank you people who have come here. You know, this was advertised well, countrywide, but you're the few that are so, so, so interested in this. So you that, that are here, you have a bigger chance to even interact with us, get to know, look at uh, the different opportunities we have. And these opportunities keep changing. They keep changing, they keep improving. Something comes up new that you didn't anticipate, but when you get to know that hey, the company, when the company gets to know you, hey, this company does this, this company, and you re, you're registered in NSD, you have an upper hand to be noticed first, and in that way, you, you're given a chance. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, I guess you can now see a lot of opportunities that are out there. This is just four companies that are presented and you can clearly see there's so much to go around. So what we try to encourage, especially in our enterprise development program, which is for businesses like yours, is to say, avoid the scarcity mindset. Scarcity mindset is where you think opportunities are here and they've gone. When you think that opportunities have gone, it will just kill your zeal on how to operate and participate in the sector. So it's very important for you to understand that an abundance mindset is possible and it's what's needed and the opportunities that have been spoken about by the four companies here have been one or worthwhile opportunities for us to engage in we're just going to go into the next presentation which is going to be a quick one from petroleum authority to update us on where we are as a country in this sector and again like i always say it's very important to listen to the boys who manage the store you know i've ever tried to operate in any of the companies and they say the man with the key is not around now Petroleum Authority are the guys with the key, the man with the key. Without them, a lot of these companies can't operate. So let them just give us a status update on where we are as a country. And after that, we can get into the last presentations and then your questions and answers. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you to have my presentation here. 
Uh, my name is Dai Peng uh, from Kosu. I'm an HR manager. Um, uh, I'm going to have three parts to have the, my presentation. Uh, first one is Kosu and uh, project introduction. Uh, Kosu is one of the leading oil field service provider uh, all over the world. Kosu offers a wide range of oil field service that covers the entire value chain of the oil field service industry. Uh, we have the more than 50 years of experience uh, listed on Hong Kong and Shanghai Stock Exchange. Comprehensive service for the exploration, development, and the production of hydrocarbons. Uh, COSO aims at become an international first class oil field service provider. To achieve this, COSO insists on working in a sustainable operating model, targets on balancing the development economy, society, and the environment endeavors to provide our clients with safe, high quality, effective, and eco friendly services. Uh, Coso's core value is when when with the uh, shareholders, customers, employees, and partners, we are dedicated to deliver high quality services while maintaining sound HSE performance. Uh, this slide shows the footprint of Coso's current operations. You can see our service area covers, covers more than 40 countries and regions around the globe, Asia Pacific, the Middle East, the Amer Americans, Europe, Africa, and the Far East. Nowadays, you could easily find us on every continent of the world. The next step is to focus on Africa business development. Uh, our headquarters in Uganda, at the end of this year, we will put a bright new mark on Uganda in this map. Uh, our current project with CNOC is the uh, Kingfisher oil field 27 well drilling and the 31 well completion. We provide the land rig, DDMWD uh, drilling and the completion float, cementing, wetland logging, and the perforating. Uh, this project with a high difficulty design and complex uh, for Formation. As part of the experience uh, in 2014, there's a high risk of collapse and sticking, many times side tracking. Uh, here is the current hour project status. As you all aware, our 8,000 meter silent automatic oil drilling rig uh, has already shipped from China successfully successfully arrived at the Kingfisher oil field. Uh, right now, the installation and the commissioning of the drilling rig is currently underway. Uh, the second part, I will give uh, our national content update. Uh, right now, we hired uh, 150 employees. Uh, as you can see here, we have almost <coughs> We have more than half uh, employee hired for Uganda nationals. Here's the details. Our first priority of recruitment, recruitment of manpower is given to the community and the Uganda nationals. In the third quarter of this project, out of 150 employees recruited for the project, 76 are Uganda nation, nationals. This implies that 50 percentage of the people employed for the project are Ugandas. Uh, all the staff in the uh, we are hired uh, has participated in basic H2S training, onshore emergency response training, work safety and technical uh, theoretical training. Each employee cost almost 104 1,400 USD dollars at least. 
uh, for our procurement achievement, all of our reinforced service has been ported from local resources. Um, as of today, we, we have sent 20 contracts with the Uganda company and the GV uh, amount 22.24 million USD dollars. We have finished, achieved 27.8 percentage of our commitment for the five years. Uh, here's some, some main reference service to show how we use the uh, Uganda company. The first one is for the transportation. Uh, as you know, for the, our drilling rig and the integrated service equipment, we have about 500 pieces of equipment, uh, which include um, drilling rig, derrick winch, uh, mud pump, uh, all of them, and our DD mud logging equipment, all of this equipment uh, need a huge amount of requirement for the local uh, transportation and clearance, customer clearance uh, service. Uh, we engaged with the Uganda companies to transport the rig from Mombasa to Kikubi. All the work involved in transportation, customers clearing and uh, providing lifting service both in Mombasa and Kingfisher is done by Ugandas. Uh, for the accommodation and uh, uh, vehicle transportation, uh, we use the Uganda companies as well. Also, we have the have cooperated with the GV company to have have the, our Kingfisher workbase construction. The contract value is uh, four hundred and fifty thousand USD dollar. Uh, the third part, I will give an update for the upcoming opportunities. First, for recruitment for the next quarter, uh, COSO committed to provide job maximum opportunities to local communities as part of execution of the project and best to achieve employment targets of local manpower during the implementation stage of the project. Uh, for the training, uh, all our employee has finished the, the first stage of the training. Uh, right now, they are on the way to participate, uh, to join the oil feed uh, operation uh, area. Uh, they will have the practical training in the Kingfisher uh, project. And also after the um, training, we will do the training assessment and the evaluation. All of employees before independently to do the job will at least have the two months of training under the guidance of the experienced employees. Also, we have uh, designed our excellent courses, which include the introduction uh, to automatically training rig, introduction to cement, slurry system, introduction to the complex situation of the water-based drilling fluid. Uh, we are aimed to not only teach the, teach the Uganda nationals to do the job, also to carry out, let them to, to know the working method. So we are going to uh, have this excellent course to invite uh, our clients, PAU, UNOC, to, to join our training. Uh, for the for the employees, uh, we will have the every every new employees will have the mentor uh, assignment. Establish we already establish a mentor uh, apprenticeship method, a designate methods for all new employees. Sign the agreement. Um, <clears throat> right now, this this is our first the first batch of the Uganda National Employees already reached the. Kingfisher oil feed to start to start the practical training. We also have the uh, competency assurance system. 
uh, we established the skills and training evaluation program. Uh, this is based on for each position, and uh, and this is for this step booklet, every position will have the after finish the manual will have the chance to get promotion for for step by step. Uh, we, but for the tech, technology transfer plan, uh, we have two parts. First, we co have the cooperation with the China University of the Petroleum and uh, give the introduction of course of business capabilities and business layout in Africa to uh, let the uh, overseas students for Uganda nat national employees to know earlier about COSO and the, the upcoming uh, opportunities for the job. Uh, we are also keep touch in touch with the McRae University, going to have the MOU for the technology transfer. For the upcoming procurement content, uh, we have the equipment spare parts, general materials involved, and also have the office suppliers, oil products, steel, electrical materials, which uh, is going to source from the Uganda. And also we have the general chemicals involved in drilling operations, mainly include uh, bentonite, cement, uh, uh carbonate, all of this, um, we are going to source from Uganda. Okay, thank. Uh, this is all my presentation. Thanks for your listening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so we've been seated for a very long time, yeah? And before we get the next presentations, I just want us to stand up and just do something small. I want us to to write Sinuk using our bodies. If you know what I mean. Let's just get up, get up, get up, get up, get up and stretch. And let's just do Sinuk, you know, with a C like that, you know. And then the N. Uh-huh. And then the O. And another O. And another C. Now I'll tell you why this is very important. And we're going to repeat it. Let's try doing or writing the cynic using cynic using our bodies. So let's begin. C O O. I know we forgot the N. N <laughs> and the C again. Okay, you can sit down. You know, there's something that's very, very, very scary. When you think about oversitting, for many of you who fly, you've heard of people who just fall asleep and never get back because of the clot or whatever. So it's important for you to stretch once in a while. And I hope I've taught you a technique. You can do it with your name. It would be even more interesting. So we're going to go to the next presentation. That's going to be done by uh, my brother, Jasim. Jasim is from Petroleum Authority, and he will be um, sharing with us on, uh, you know, giving us an update of where we stand as a country in regard to the oil resource. So Jasim, you could just step up here. Like I mentioned before, Jasim is the man with the key. So again, all the questions that need crazy answers, he will be able to answer. Good morning to you all. Once again, thank you very much, Toa, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Justin Chon Kamianja, uh, Enterprise Development Officer at the Petroleum Authority of Uganda. So this morning, I'll be taking you through the key updates of the Uganda's oil and uh, gas sector and um, the available uh, tier two contracts. So the presentation outline, as you can see, there's introduction, then status of the st sector, opportunities, and uh, finally, conclusion. Um, an introduction um, is we'll with the institutional framework for Uganda's oil and gas sector. Uh, there's a policy formulation, investment promotion, and licensing, and that is handled by the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development. Uh, then there is a regulatory arm whereby we fall. There is a, to regulate and monitor upstream and midstream subsectors ensure compliance to petroleum operations that is handled by the Petroleum Authority. 
Then we move on to the commercial arm that is uh, to move forward, uh, that which is handled by uh, Uganda National Oil, uh, uh, Uganda National Oil Company, which handles, uh, which moves to, which mandates to move forward the country's commercial interests and create joint ventures across the petroleum value chain. Um, then, uh, further introduction, the, the, I'm sure you've seen this in several times in many other oil and gas um, presentations. So I'll just quickly skim through it. Um, Uganda has 21 oil and gas discoveries, 88% um, success rate, 6.5 uh, billion barrels in the uh, uh, 6.5 billion barrels of oil in place, 1.4 billion barrels which are recoverable, um, uh, nine production licenses over 14 fields, uh, which are handled by the joint venture partners that is Sinok, Total, and Unok. Um, three exploration licenses, uh, which are so far handed over to Ama Energy and Oranto. Um, five blocks uh, are on offer for the second licensing round. And then there are uh, 85%, uh, so far there's 85% of the Albertine Grabbin, which is still unlicensed, so still many more opportunities. Um, then there are two upstream development projects, um, 230,000 barrels per day, expected to peak production. Uh, Tilenga, which is expected to produce 190,000 barrels per day, and Kingfisher, which is expected to produce 40,000 barrels. Then um, there are two mainstream commercialization projects, that is the East African Crude Oil Pipeline, um, then uh, the refinery project as well. So, so far, over 3.8 billion has been invested in the sector, um, from uh, in the sector to the end of 2001, uh, 2021. Of which 180 million was invested in um, 2020 and 500 million invested in 2021. With each year that goes by, there's more and more money invested. Over 15 billion is expected to be invested in the next five years. Um, that is 3 billion in 2022, um, which first oil is still expected and, and still on track for 2025. Um, an additional 40 billion US dollars is expected to be invested over the following 25 years of operation and maintenance of the oil fields over the infrastructure. So as you can see right now, we are in the peak development season. So most that's the time most of the uh, investments will take place. Then after first oil, uh, there will be a plateau, but still there will still be many opportunities available. Then so far, the, uh, the legal and we re legal framework that uh, that we follow there's the oil and gas national the national oil and gas policy there's the petroleum exploration development and production act of 2013 petroleum refining conversion transmission and midstream uh, storage act of 20 uh, 2013 the petroleum exploration development and production regulations of 2016 uh, the petroleum refining conversion and transmission and midstream storage regulations 2016 and then the the Petroleum Exploration Development and Production, National Contract Directions of 2016, and then the Petroleum Refining, Conversion, Transmission, and Mainstream Storage, um, and National Contract Regulations of 2016. These are the main regulations that everyone has to familiarize, familiarize themselves on. Um, they were formulated in a way that uh, benefits you and I as a Ugandan. So, national content. What are we doing to enhance national content? Um, so, in, when it comes to employment of Ugandans, we are developing the e-work permit system um, that is to ease the work permits uh, uh, application process, provision of a review of the point, persons on board reports, those are the people who, are, who go to the, to the oil fields on a daily, uh, the National Oil and Gas Talent Register, that is for people who are, if you have a talent and you feel you need, you need more visibility in the sector, how do you get more visibility? You register, that is a, a database that is managed by the um, uh, Petroleum Authority. Uh, you can register it, you can through the uh, Petroleum Authority website and register your talent. And then the quarterly human resource um, reports, then we also review the nationalization plans for each and, and every licenses and companies as well. Then skills development, review the work skills development programs, skills development dialogues, um, the OCTA, all and gas talent um, associates uh, of Uganda, uh, guidance of the National Council of Higher Education on which courses they can teach in their institutions and curriculum, development of curricular paths and partnership with universities, and then approval of annual training plans. In terms of enterprise development, uh, medium enterprise and business linkages programs, and the sub support of, of supplier development workshops and uh, national content conference conventions and meetings such as this one, 
um, supporting the establishment of National Content Fund, uh, dissemination of uh, requirement of standards across the oil and gas sector together with the uh, UNPS, then regular meetings with uh, potential suppliers and service companies uh, to guide them. Then uh, digitalization of Ugandan goods and services, we review bid uh, evaluation reports. So every time um, a, license, uh, a bid is completed, we, we have to review it as the authority to see if it was done in a fair, transparent manner. Um, then also that there's a national supplier database. Um, that one, the national supplier database is where all the companies and enterprises go to register. It is mandated if you want to supply something or a product or a service in that sector you have to be registered on the database. Um, it's not only mandated, but also it helps you to increase your visibility. Because obviously, if a low foreign company comes in on, on board to say I'm supplying, I'm going to supply paint, we, have, we can look on the, on, the, on the database and see there are over 100 other, other company, local companies that can supply paint. So please, let us give the chance to the uh, local entity. Then um, they review the, and approve the annual procurement plans the, for the licenses. Then there's the national content uh, plans and commitments. Uh, we have to review and enforce them. Then we are going through a fabrication assessment to see how the steel sector can benefit, uh, further benefit. Then also we're developing a community content strategy to see how to further engage uh, to get the local content, the local suppliers within the regions um, active and to supply the sector. Then there is technology and knowledge tra uh, transfer, promotion and review and approve joint ventures. Uh, we collaborate collaboration with, Ghana, with the Ghana universities and international institutions regarding the sharing of knowledge and, and transfer uh, knowledge, uh, technology and software. So universities or vocational institutions which need um, sof sophisticated software related to oil and gas sector, we find ways of mediating that to see how the uh, licenses or other companies can um, can come on board to offer that uh, such such such, such um, softwares. Then uh, we approve our technology transfer plans, and then also we're developing a domestication strategy to see these foreign companies that have come on board how they can how they can they stay longer to 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 benefit the Ugandan economy. So opportunities. Some of the key drivers are um, IOCs are issuing uh, EPC contracts, as you can see, they're right there. Um, then there are different tiers or levels of opportunities. The tier one, two, and three. I'll talk further on that. Uh, and then the construction phase is expected to take place for another three to four years. Um, they expected to be over eleven thousand to fifteen thousand people in camps. One just one construction company has over a thousand people, and there are several other construction companies. So yes, all those people um, need to be fed. Um, then there are over uh, hundred thousand people in operation areas during the activities involved in the oil and gas sector. Um, then there are over a million people moving within the Alpatine Gabrin during the construction phase of the oil and gas projects. Post-construction is expected to take 25-year investment. Then uh, new exploration projects um, are still ongoing. Uh, the, the, the licenses, uh, the licenses are, are still valid. For, they were valid from 2018 to 2024. Um, then the, the necessary, there's construction of the necessary infrastructure such as airports, roads, and power. Uh, there's a second licensing round, uh, and then there's a strong legal framework that supports national content. Uh, and then the opportunities are beyond go beyond the uh, oil and gas sector. We are pre uh, uh, we are formulating leakages uh, leakages to see how the uh, food uh, sector can benefit, the uh, health sector can benefit, other sectors rather can benefit from and uh, grow from the oil and gas sector. Then opportunities in employment, um, employment and skills development. Um, approximately uh, 160,000 jobs are expected, uh, 14,000 jo direct jobs, uh, 42,700 indirect jobs, and 105,000 induced jobs as expected within mainly the development phase. Um, further on employment of Ugandans, at the end of um, June 2022, 5,372 persons, of whom 5,106, that is 95 percent, were Ugandans employed in the sector. Um, 384 persons out of the 4,087 contractor and subcontractor employees are from the local co communities within the region. Um, yes, it, as you can see, the employment uh, increased substantially when it came to 2001, when activities picked up. Then uh, opportunities for training and certification, um, partnerships with training institutions. We partner with so many like Chikumba and um, so many other vocational and uh, 
higher level institutions. Uh, then we also offer sk skills guidance for other lower institutions. Then uh, we grow growing demand for technical skill sets. There's a growing demand for technical skill sets um, like welding, heavy goods, vehicle heavy goods vehicle drivers and equipment operators. Um, contracts approved by the authority to date. Um, as you can see, there are some from Tilenga, Ecop, and uh, King, uh, Kingfisher. Um, just to mention a few access roads, mud logging, electrical. Um, that's for Tilenga, Ecop. There's thermal installation, line pipes, security, uh, Kingfisher, permanent camp, oil pipe preparation, supply and delivery, drain, uh, conductor pipes. So many. And they, they are an, an, each and every day receive more BRs for approval. Um, tier one contracts approved by authority. Further, um, there is construction um, with the subcontracting um, opportunities. Um, there is um, construction and resettlement of resettlement houses. Some of the um, uh, subcontracting opportunities are waste, uh, wastewater treatment, laboratory, landfill services, security insurance, to mention but a few. EPCM, there is food, beverages, environment studies, office, camp, uh, play, uh, camp appliances, furniture, vehicle purchase, main logistics uh, contractor, site consumables, PPE, facility equipment, transport services, management of the yard, uh, carries on equip, uh, electrical instrumentation, instrumentation controls, telecommunication and security. Uh, those are some of their con subcontractors, pipeline construction and AGI construction. Um, then CFT, access roads, uh, design and engineering, uh, construction materials, uh, material haulage, uh, well pads and liquid abstraction and preparation. There is security camp management, communication, waste motor, management, transportation and logistics, waste management, uh, the security services, catering medical services, insurance, camp facilities management, global medical support services, and so on and so on. There are so many other, um, there are so many subcontracting opportunities that every company can get a service they can provide to the, to the tier one, tier two contractors. So this is how some of the contractors disseminate their information. They put in the newspapers uh, on their websites. So obviously you have to be keen to see uh, where the advert has been placed. We also do make an effort to place some of the adverts on, um, we, on, on our website. Um, those that uh, need a wide broadcast, we even broadcast them to, to, the, to the companies registered on the supplier database. Um, so you just have to be keen. Um, companies advertise on their websites, companies advertise on the newspapers, companies advertise on so many other sources. So you just have to be keen and look out for where the information has, be, has been placed. Um, then national content uh, achievements, some of the utilization of uh, Ugandan goods and services in the past five years, approximately 90% of procurements have gone to um, Ugandan companies, over 1.2 billion out of the 1.3. Then um, Approximately 75% of companies involved in supplying the sector have been Ugandan companies. Then approximately uh, 900 thousand uh, dollars, nine, over 900, close to a million, has gone to the community, community economy through provision of goods and services. Uh, enterprise development opportunities. There's the Industrial Enhancement Center. Um, this is going to be run by um, uh, the Joint Venture Partner Total. They have so far uh, going through a bid process whereby they're going to train local companies on to how to better themselves. Because um, obviously, so many, we know so many companies have um, bidding challenges or financing challenges or how to organize they, themselves to be to look uh, uh, to compete with these foreign companies that have come in place. So this industrial enhancement center, once it, it gets running, um, it will be it will companies will register and obviously they will have the, they will offer training for the companies. If you register, you go through the, the, the application process. They offer training for the companies to to better yourselves on to 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 be more competitive, basically. Then there is a medium small small scale uh, um, AFDP project. This is along the uh, in, in, this is in partnership uh, PA in partnership with the African Development Bank. Uh, along the ACOP districts, we are training uh, different enterprises along the ACOP districts to see also them how they can better themselves and also supply the, the sector. 
within the supplier development workshops, we enforce that um, the licensees and their contractors offer quarterly supplier development workshops such as this one. And then for those, if you feel like um, the scope you're going for is complex, please don't be afraid to reach out to your international partner or even your local partner, your fellow local partner. You don't have to go for a job alone. You can venture with, because um, we have seen joint ventures with um, a, 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 an assortment of four local companies coming together, uh, combining their resources to see, to, 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 to win a job, to win a contract. So um, you can, the, basically the sky is the limit. If you're going for international partners, local partners, please, um, you don't have to go at a, at, a, at a bid or a job alone. You can always, the, the, the cake is too much. You can all have a slice. Then um, these are some of the monthly estimates for a 5,000 person camp. Uh, just to mention a few, 23,000 trays of eggs, 320 sacks of potatoes, 3,840 pineapples, 1,024 bunches of matoke, 3,840 watermelon, 124 sacks of rice, um, 6,400 tomatoes, and so on and so on. So basically the supply, the, any food stuff can be, will be consumed. No matter what you're supplying, it will be consumed as long as it meets the standards. Um, it will be consumed. Uh, further opportunities, there's logistics requirements, for instance, tilling and kingfisher equipment and material estimated at uh, 7 million tons. Um, these will require close to 600 tons, 600 trucks per month transport to construction sites. And as you know, Uganda is a landlocked country, so yes, we have to. There's a huge demand for, the, for, for these trucks. Um, East African crude oil pipeline and the refinery project will also require 350 trucks per, per month of equipment and over 300 lifting and earth moving equipment are required to, for the operating areas. So to conclude, um, the benefits are coming through employment, supply of works, goods and services to the project. Frameworks like NSD, uh, National Supply Database, have been put in place to increase visibility and competency to Ugandans. Um, to participate in the opportunities being uh, created. Uh, Ugandans are encouraged to embrace partnerships with foreign players to break barriers of financial and technical capacity and to enhance value retention. The development phase comes with enormous opportunities to benefit Ugandans in the economy. So to enhance sustainability, project benefits are also coming through linkages and other sectors like agriculture, manufacturing and tourism. Um, a number of areas of goods and services provision here have been ring for Ugandans, some of these, my, all of which have been mentioned earlier in earlier presentations. So please uh, visit our website, uh, uh, that is the PAU website, uh, for the industry opportunities and related publications. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, that has been a very nice and comprehensive one, I guess. For many of you who are interested in food, you've seen also the food numbers quite crazy numbers of food and again it goes back to the whole conversations around quality i remember uh, a couple of weeks ago in uh, hoima one of the farmers was complaining about why his food was not being consumed or taken simple standards and quality remember that people who have to eat this food have to stay alive the next day to work so quality is very very important so we're going to go to the next uh, presentation and this will mark the last of presentations and after that we're going to go into a questions and answers session after a quick um, a presentation by uh, Emma Mugarura on uh, the participation of companies in the oil and gas sector, so for now we're going to have uh, we're going to have a presentation made by the presentation made by uh, the joint venture of Luero Industries and Oil HBP Science and Technology. This presentation is going to be made by. Mr. Enoch Atuhera, Atuhera, who uh, is a representative from the Wero Industries. He'll be speaking in, uh, he's speaking on behalf of the company, Mr. Stanley Nya Diabahika. So, uh, Enoch, please.
Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Atwera Enoch. I'm here on behalf of uh, Wear Industries and HBP. Uh, it's a joint venture, and uh, we are having uh, a contract of managing uh, a drilling waste for Kingfisher. So, and um, drilling waste management is at the tail end of all the activities that uh, have been talked about. And on a lighter note, I bet that's why I've been uh, asked to present last, <laughs> because uh, we are at the tail end. I'm presenting uh, on behalf of Ndiabai Kastanre. Who is not uh, who was not available, and uh, that is why I'm carrying his uh, cross now. Uh, I'm in charge of environment, uh, health, and safety for this project, and uh, that's how I come in to do the, uh, to do this presentation. So I'll talk about the, a brief uh, a profiles of both companies. Uh, I'll talk about the activities. I'll talk about uh, the opportunities that uh, are available. That is Ruero Industries headquarters in Nakasongora, where uh, Ruero Industries does very many other things apart from waste management. It actually started waste management even before NEMA came into place. So. There are several other activities that are done there. It is not only waste management. Waste management is just one part of what is done. And uh, that is uh, the headquarters of uh, HBP, our joint venture partners in this uh, waste management. Now, Rural Industries was established in 1989, and it's fully owned uh, by National Enterprise Corporation. It's a subsidiary of National Enterprise Corporation, uh, which is the business arm of uh, Ministry of Defense. Uh, there are several other subsidiaries uh, like NEC Works, like uh, NEC Farm, like uh, Uzima Water, that do uh, a lot of, uh, several other things. But uh, here, and uh, rural uh, industries, uh, I'll focus now major on managing waste, although it does other things for Ministry of Defense. And we have uh, uh, at least 500 employees that we are we are we are working with. Uh, China All HBP Group was founded in uh, in 1998, and uh, it has several other subsidiaries and it's almost worldwide and it has over uh, almost approximately 2,000 employees. So those are our partners as rural well industries that we are working with in managing uh, this waste. Now we have uh, the facilities uh, that we use in doing this. We have the engineering uh, landfills, some are in Nakasongola, where the, uh, the factory is, and some are being developed in uh, Changwari, uh, near the King Fisher uh, development area. Uh, we have uh, an incinerator uh, that we use to incinerate whatever is hazardous, and the best method of treatment is incineration. So we have it in Nakasongora, and uh, it is fully automated. It has uh, two chambers, and it heats between uh, 800 degrees to 1,200 degrees. So this one helps us in uh, uh, incineration of uh, waste that cannot be directly landfilled or stabilized or needs to be worked on first before you can dispose. 
uh, we have laboratories uh, in Nakasongora, uh, and these ones help us to monitor we, whatever we are doing. Uh, we are trying to preserve the environment and to avoid pollution and and all of that that is involved. Uh, that is why actually all the previous speakers we are telling you that you must have standards. So we must have those standards of managing environment, health and safety to make sure that we are not causing damage to the environment or the people who are working. And those are the standards uh, that they want. So we have a laboratory that does that. We do air monitoring, we do monitoring the water. By the way, we are very near uh, Lake Choga, just around three kilometers, so we don't want to contaminate the lake. So we have to do the monitoring, we have to look at the plants around, all of that. So we have these laboratories which manage this. And uh, we also have industrial furnaces. Uh, these ones are used majorly to manage uh, uh, metals, the metal waste. Uh, to recycle uh, that uh, was now we have uh, a facility we are setting up in uh, in Changwari. Uh, this is where uh, the summer disruption unit and the landfill of all the waste that will be generated in Kingfisher will be laid to rest. Uh, it is uh, next to the safety is next to this uh, is it the safety check station of uh, Sino just next there on top of this government so that is where we are putting up the facility and uh, okay this is the incinerator I was talking about that's a picture of the incinerator Uh, yes, let me first talk about this facility that we're setting up. So all the operations will be mainly on top of uh, on that escarpment. That is where this facility is going to be. That is where the landfills are. That is why the fuel laboratories will be. And it, uh, right now it is uh, under construction. And uh, talking of national content, uh, the construction was done internally, but most of the people there, uh, the people who are building, the builders, uh, I would say who are skilled, and all the all the, the the helpers that they have are from the community around there. So that is national content. Uh, we also have. Uh, a national electronic waste management facility which is based here in the industrial area on 6th street this one basically manages electronic waste i think uh, right here we have a lot of electronics eh? but after their life they need to be disposed properly because they pose uh, danger to, to to the environment and uh, to the people so we set up uh, that facility and we are being uh, supervised by NEMA, UCC, uh, NITA, uh, UNBS, uh, Uganda Investment Authority, URA, KCCA. So we are working with them, they are stakeholders, and we also try to manage uh, that waste. So that is that was the inauguration of the of the U.S. management facility. It's on 6th Street. And we own, by the way, we have licenses uh, that allow us to own and operate all these facilities, right from the incinerator, the landfills, the U.S. management facility. We have everything in that respect. Now, we have opportunities for uh, that will be available uh, to, to, uh, to, the, to, to the nationals here. Waste transportation uh, from the field to the uh, management center. Now, uh, this one here was advertised actually in the newspapers and uh, 
companies, Ugandan companies responded. Uh, we went through the whole bidding process as it's supposed to do, and we are almost finalizing uh, the award contract to the waste transporter. Uh, but actually, uh, the company was a joint venture. A joint venture. They were uh, talking about joint ventures. Joint ventures are very important because if in a joint venture where you are weak, your partner is stronger. And uh, this is how uh, this uh, contract uh, it was awarded uh, based on that. When you are you get you in a joint venture, you are more heavy. You are more you wear a lot. So the waste transportation will be done by joint venture partners. So that is how it is important. Wherever someone was weak, the other one was stronger. So they made up uh, something good. Uh, we have uh, catering services. This is within the car. Uh, that uh, facility where we'll be managing waste from, we'll be having a camp uh, that uh, will be accommodating over 60 people now. So there will be a camp. Uh, there is the waste treatment area uh, where the operations will be going on. So all of the people who are working there need uh, to eat. So this is uh, another opportunity, uh, the catering services. There, are, there is tour and travel services. We all know what uh, those ones will do. So that is one opportunity to, uh, to exploit. There is a private security services. Uh, although we have uh, enough security, we still need the private uh, security companies to come in. Uh, there are some aspects they probably handle better than the, uh, the security that we might have. So that is another another opportunity. Private security companies, you have to come in and uh, exploit this. We have cleaning services. Uh, the camp needs to be cleaned. The treatment facility needs to be cleaned. Uh, all around the facility needs to be cleaned. So there is laundry. There is what all those services uh, are available and they need to be exploited. Construction services, of course, if there is need of expansion, now this time round construction will be uh, also available. Then we have consultancy services uh, in uh, say HR, in uh, several other fields where we might not have professionals to handle those fields uh, internally. So this has to be uh, advertised also and uh, they can come in, you can come in and uh, take these opportunities. There is insurance and brokerage uh, services. Of course this uh, uh, field requires uh, a lot of insurance. We have this uh, workman's insurance, we have uh, public liability, we have uh, insurance of the facility, we have insurance of uh, the equipment and all that that will be used. So that is an area that also needs to be exploited. Um, communication services and data systems that will be used in the management and operations of the facility, that is something that is also uh, waiting. Uh, clearing and forwarding services are also waiting because more equipment is bound to come in and it needs to be uh, to be cleared. Uh, there is training now, this kind of training it is to comply with the available standards. Uh, we could look at the major ones, uh, first aid and CPR fire awareness and uh, and uh, fighting, firefighting, defensive driving for those who drive, uh, 
EHS environment health and safety training in terms of awareness and uh, our risk assessments, all of those other things involved. So these are, if you're a training company in those fields, you surely need to look out uh, for these opportunities and exploit them. There's events, PR and entertainment. That is another field that you need to, uh, to work on, uh, to, to wait on and uh, exploit. Uh, the workforce uh, recruitment uh, has not yet begun, but uh, most of the recruitment will be from the, uh, the nationals. Uh, we will also look at uh, people, the residents of the area. We will need some people there. We will need uh, skilled people who are nationals and actually in the in the, uh, the in the structure that we have come up. Yes, there are the uh, expatriates who will come in to. Actually, some are there to install and uh, train people, the nationals here. Uh, the, 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 that is what uh, the gentleman from Powell was talking about, the knowledge transfer. And they will be transferring the knowledge to Ugandans. So uh, the workforce, most of it will be made from more... Uh, uh, from around from Uganda. So if you are a labor company, if you you provide uh, skilled labor, uh, you have to look out for for this. Now most of these opportunities, actually all of them, they will be advertised in the newspapers. Uh, some companies that we know will be contacted. Uh, on social media uh, sites, uh, we will also have to contact uh, the National Petroleum Authority to help us in spreading the message to make sure that uh, all the uh, national the national companies can uh, join in and see how to exploit what they are capable. Of doing. That is what I can say for now. And uh, the consortium partners remain committed to providing solutions for the three major global crises pollution, climate change, and biodiversity preservation. So, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, that comes to the end of our presentations for today. And I hope you've really picked out a lot of the opportunities that are within these companies. And I hope that you can actually also take one, you know. It's just one thing to see these opportunities. There's another thing to also engage. And I hope you can also use this opportunity to ask these guys for, you know, the uh, contacts of the people who are within these spaces where, that you have seen. Because a guy like um, Brian or or anyone here won't really know what's happening when you talk about, say, geotests and all of that. So you need to ask them who the people are in that area. So you can get used to them, get familiar with them, and understand what this work is. Finally, um, before we get into our Q&A, we'll take, and again, now this uh, presentation, I must say, is going to stand between us and lunch and our Q&A, and I hope Emma can make it very short. And Emma Mugara will be presenting on what SMEs need to do to participate in the oil and gas sector. So Emma, you'll come and present on behalf of the Association of Uganda Oil and Gas Service Providers. And after that, we'll go into the Q&A, where I hope you have your questions ready for us to be able to engage as much as we can. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tony. Um, I was supposed to make a presentation about... Uh, what SMEs um, need to do to participate in the oil and gas sector. But then everybody that presented was asked to do the same. 
So I don't think it's necessary to to reinvent the wheel and uh, that I stand between you and lunch and Q&A. I'll make sure that uh, I just make a few remarks. So I'm not making that presentation because everything I should have said has been said. I just want to make a few comments on um, what we ought to do or what should be done and maybe what our leaders need to do to us to help us participate uh, in oil and gas. Ladies and gentlemen, when we started talking about, uh, when we started coming for such events with this gentleman, Tony, about uh, 10 or so years ago, we would be in such meetings and um, about 90% of the people would be non-Ugandans. But now, when you look around, um, I think you can identify most of the people. I believe most of the participants are again, and I think that's a, a big step forward. But then when you look at the numbers, um, they don't tell the same story. Uh, PAU tells us that uh, during the exploration stage, the oil companies, the IOCs, spent about 28, 29% of the money locally. Now, we need to move that uh, GIA up and higher so that at least we look at about 40-45%. Uh, 28% of the $3 billion spent in exploration was about $100, uh, I mean $1 billion. They're not talking about $15 billion. We need to look at retaining maybe 6 7 of that and... Um, it's doable, it's possible. Um, we believe so much in Uganda in the marriage that uh, if you cannot make it, fake it. Unfortunately for oil and gas, if you fake it, you have failed it. And it's a standard. But I still have a problem with, uh, with the contractors. They keep telling us about standards, standards, standards. But they don't tell us what those standards are. I think on top of telling us about standards, tell us what those standards are. If I'm in human resource, what are the standards that I need to get? If I'm in uh, food production, what are the standards that I need? If I'm in uh, construction, what are the standards? So, Matthew, beyond the standard, telling us about standards, let's know what those standards are. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we need to understand that oil and gas is both labor and capital intensive. And we can't run away from that. And that's why there's a need for uh, building strong JVs. And those JVs, we should not be in just because we need a small coin. We need to be in as participants because we have seen that where we are the weak link in the JVs, things have not worked. We need to regularize, we need to have uh, the PAU approve these JVs. We have a problem uh, of uh, high cost of money in Uganda, it's clear. Um, most of our people, some of our members have lost property at banks and lending institutions. So we need to look for JVs, we need to look for joint ventures where partners can bring money maybe experience, and we can put on the table what we have. We have some of the highest uh, interest rates in the region. It's not anything to be proud of. Um, when we are competing, we compete favorably on other things, on technical uh, submissions, but when we go to commercial, we tend to be the highest because we borrow money quite expensively. Another issue, and um, this goes to PAU, is a case of taxation. The local service providers are not benefiting from the existing tax policy. The tax policy favors the tier one contractors. For example, if I am in two catering and I'm uh, contracted by Sino to provide catering services, I cannot enjoy a tax incentive. I'm, I have to pay VAT on my import. Yet, if Sinoc does importation of that equipment, it 
he doesn't pay VAT. But look, Sinop will not do this work. It is the local company, the Ghanaian company, or a contractor that will do the work. But that contractor does not benefit from a tax incentive. You understand my point? So we want PAU to go and try and uh, harmonize that so that we can benefit from the tax incentive that is actually supposed to benefit people who are participating in um, oil and gas. We want government, some government, some government to We want government to help us on issues of provision of infrastructure, water, roads, power. If I had powers, I would uh, stage a new demonstration against you this year. I imagine that. <laughs> You this year, wherever they are, we pray to God that uh, they change whatever they are doing for the better. The people in Ubrisa are suffering. With they actually in Ubrisa they have more dark hours than power hours. You have to own a generator of some sort in Ubrisa because power UEDCL is more off than on. How can we develop? How can we develop our country? How can we participate in this industry if we do not have basics like power? Internet. We have one of the most expensive uh, internet costs in uh, in the region, and we have to participate. So we need some of these things. We need to be hope to get some of these because they. The capital investment on top of doing what we are supposed to do is too much. We cannot invest in roads. We cannot make the roads on behalf of government. We cannot uh, have uh, power on behalf of government. We cannot provide water on behalf of government. Let's, if I'm a caterer, let me prepare the food. Let government do what it's supposed uh, to do. And it's the same thing with gas. The cost of, uh, of LNG gas is so high compared to, to the region. Um, People, we've been talking about certification and training. Those are a must. We must do them. We must do skilling. We must learn, relearn, and unlearn. Let's unlearn the things that, that are not necessary. Let's learn the things we don't know. Let's relearn to be better. Let's get the certification. Because without certification, no one is going to look at you. And we also need to have the proper documentation of our companies. Proper documentation. Whoever you know in this country, if you have the best gamba no go in this world, you will not get this job unless you are on the national supply database. That I can tell. Some of our members have lost contracts because of NSP. I don't want to mention names. Some of the biggest companies you know in this country have failed to get contracts because of lack of NSP. And what does it take? Just go on the PAU website. If you have the proper documents, it takes a matter of days and you have your NSP now. We have seen people cry at the time of award when they have been told, you have everything, but you're not an NSD. Sorry, we cannot give you this contract. Why do you have to wait until the last minute? Before we used to do it, they used to open the, 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 the site and uh, close it. Now it's open 24-7, why don't you go on the national supply database? And what is so worrying, actually, is that when you go there, there are more foreign companies than Ugandan companies. And we complain. Because that's what we do best. We complain, we point fingers, we uh, these people, these people. But we fail to do the basics that we need to do. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to participate in oil and gas, you must be on the national supplier database. Keep checking. You might, your, your registration might expire when you don't know. Please keep it uh, checking. N make sure that as an individual and your company are registered with the National Supplier Database. And lastly, we need to have some more of these information sharing. My experience in oil and gas is that if you don't have, and any other business anyway, if you do not have information, you, you lack you lack, you miss like 40% of what you need to do. You could be having the best uh, company, maybe best construction company, the best engineers, the best, but if you do not have information like this, you'll not know. For example, um, 
they've been telling us what we need to do to participate. But uh, Excel, you didn't tell us, for example, what are your procurement procedures? Do we follow PPDA? Do we follow CNOC? Do we follow what is the what is the method? What is the procedure? What do we need to do to participate in oil and gas? Maybe when we go into the Q and A session, you're going to give us more information. But I've seen that there is a lot of we have already uh, the process is ongoing. We have already uh, procured. We need to get more information on how we can participate. Otherwise, when we sit here and we see slides of we have already awarded, we have already awarded, we look like we we've come to be part of the <laughs> of the of the procession. Let's be let's be involved from the word go. Let's share your numbers, share your email addresses. Let's call you. Pick our phones. Talk to us. Because that's why you are there for anyway. <laughs> you are national content, and we are the content that you are supposed to to support. <laughs> so we need this information. <laughs> I thank you very much, uh, Matthew, for giving us the opportunity. I thank you very much, those of you who have managed to register. When they sent me the link to register, I shared it among the groups where I am, and. Uh, most people waited until Monday to call me to tell me that they had failed to register. I asked them why. He said, saying we cannot register. I said, why? They didn't tell me that actually they were registered in the last minute. There was a limit of the number of people they could admit. You waited until the last minute and you failed. Oil and gas doesn't work like that. She was saying, I think Linda, she was saying 4 p.m. we shall close. They close and you do nothing. Whether you call whoever you want to call. It will not happen. So please, business unusual. Business unusual. We must get away from the ghetto and the gutter and this business of, th of thinking that I'm going to call so and so to help me. I'm going to fail to beat deadlines and uh, do my things. That must stop. The briefcase company time has ended. We must be. We, we must now be in line. The only way we can compete, the only way we can put our heads up is by being in the right places at the right time. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Thank you very much, Emma. You know what I like about Emma is uh, one of those guys who's hard eating the inconvenient truths. And the reason why he has the ability to say that is because he's been in the trenches for a very long time, for a long, long while. Now. We have 40 minutes, and in these 40 minutes, we're going to take questions. And I, I'm still getting the instructions, sir. I'm still giving the instructions. <laughs> Someone put up his hand already. Uh, 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 you know, you're the kind of guy in school who would ask for a full scope, while others are still getting instructions, an extra full scope. So we're going to take um, questions in these 40 minutes. Your name, the company you represent, and who the question is aimed at or aimed remember to be precise don't tell us your grandmother's story your grandfather's story just be pre precise tell us what you want to know from the person and make it very short and we'll be taking a round of 10 and after those 10 we're going to the next round so the gentleman at the back and the uh, I think you can start here and then you just move to the back. Greetings to all. Thanks a lot for all this excellent presentation. My question is what I saw in all this, whatever you presented is about the training part where it is all technical training and HSC training. I never saw anywhere about management training. But first of all, let me sorry about that. My name is uh, Najam Sefi Japan. I am from the UP training company. And I have worked in Saudi Aramco for the last 12 years from Saudi Arabia. So what I've seen is that what we need to do is, I'll share my experience over there. We had a lot of failure, a lot of incidents occurred over there. That's a question, right? Yes. I want it to be a question. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to make sure we need to have behavioral based soft skills training also. Because that is 88% requirement of any company. So we don't want to have, we want to be just proactive in our approach. We don't want, God forbid, any incident to occur and then we take some action on it. So we need to make sure that in our, all over this, we need to have soft skills and behavioral training also to be included in this. 
that's all thank you very much so to all these companies whatever you listed so please include that part also in your bidding or in your tender so that at least we can we will be there and we will be there to support and we make sure that we have at the end is competent workforce we had some problem over there where we had to go back and redesign our lnd system so now since we are starting from scratch over here so let us be proactive in our approach and make sure we have a competent workforce at the end thank you very much Thank you, Tony. My name is Robert Tuaswa, working with Wise Up Project Uganda Limited as Public Policy and Partnership Officer. Uh, when we come to meet forums like this, we are given an opportunity to extrapolate more conversation around issues. Over the next five and ten to ten years, key milestones in Uganda's oil and gas sector will include implementing the ongoing projects. Uh, related to the final investment decision that was reached some time. My question goes to Petroleum Authority. What hurdles does Uganda face in maximizing the potential of national content? Two, how do you assess the level of national content in the gas or oil sector? Thank you very much. Just limit your questions to one question, one question per individual, and remember, remember to aim or tell us who your question is aimed at. Otherwise, no one will really take it on. The lady at the front. My name is Chrissy Najuma from Binit Services. We are waste management company. My question goes to Enoch uh, about. Uh, talked about opportunities um, and he already mentioned that they've already given away that tender like he mentioned for us we've been working with the uh, well industries but we didn't get to know about it Rover, we are business partners with the well industries that's my question okay so it so points to uh, how much you are spending on your research and and, 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 and finding or, or, or even buying newspapers but I think that will be answered by uh, your partner here uh, so I think you've had the question uh, it's for you uh, you are doing things enjoying without telling people who you work with um, the other question there are two questions there yeah thank you so much Sinoko Uganda Limited for organizing such an event I'm Kasacha Elzefan from Covilite Investments Limited. We deal in geological surveys and GIS training. My question goes to Madam Linda. It's about the joint ventures. You hinted about companies to qualify must at least have been in business for three years and then they must have completed at least three projects worth one million US dollar. So, in the assessment and evaluation of joint ventures for SMEs, do you consider these experiences cumulatively for both companies or you look at each company independently? Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Prenal and I'm with Petronic Services Limited. And actually my question is a follow-up to the gentleman's question to Linda. So Linda, um, again, I saw that you had mentioned that it has to be in the last three years contract, each contract value of $5 million. Doesn't that almost like disqualify almost every Ugandan company to try to do any subcontracting work? I mean, just realistically speaking, you know, we're, we're not uh, a first world country and we have limitations. We've never done work in oil and gas. We've got experience. So my question is, how, um, how is this in the favor of a Ugandan local content company when you set such stipulations when we've just come out of COVID? Okay, and uh, two more questions and then we'll have the first round. I just want to keep this very short to 12.40 because at 12.40 we'll break off for lunch and in the afternoon when we come back, we're going to break into small focus groups where you can actually choose which company you want to uh, engage with 
and take it on from there. Your question, sir. My name is David Waravieki. My company is Eagle Logistics Solutions Limited. I'm looking out to the gentleman from PAU. Okay, and of course the rest will be by default also implicated. Joint venture agreement. It's the way to go. But the multinationals or the international companies are looking at us as very small people. Okay? Grand as the ideas might look or the projects might look based on the scope that is being advertised, you are you're being asked, what is it? I mean, you're looked up, looked down upon, okay? What is it that PAU can do to help local companies that have the potential? One, I, I can have land, I can have capacity to outsource skilled staff from Makere, I mean, skilled students from Makere doing chemical engineering courses what is in there can can an agency if if an international company does not want to play ball and the timelines are short okay for for for, for the opportunity to be harnessed time is key now the joint venture agreement they will tell you it will take about 6 months for the board of directors to sit about your proposal and yet, uh, Dai King or Sinok or who, whoever it is, has put a limit. So, is there a way that, for instance, PAU plus the IOCs can maybe say, if there is an agency agreement, because it might be easier for the international or multinational companies to appoint you as their agent here, because JV, if it is a public listed company that's not in Uganda, how are they going to be confident dealing with my company? That's not even a quote, not even a hundredth of their value, regardless of the potential here. I hope I'm clear in terms of that. Thank you very much. And I guess it also brings in the whole conversation around, you know, joint ventures where many companies will come in just local joint venture, local company as a joint venture partner, and when it comes to eating the bread, the local guy is pretty much not there. I think those are hard conversations we need to have. And again, if we are to benefit from this conversation, we need to be inconveniently truthful. So that question, I think, also has to be answered. Next question. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ferdinand. I am a tax director. I am the tax director at Libra Advocates and Consultants. My question is aimed at uh, Mr. Emmanuel Mugarura with regards to Ogos's efforts in uh, extending the VAT deeming further down the value chain to members who are in this very room. And I'd like to know what steps they're taking and what successes they've had with this, because my strong knowledge of the URA and how they handle this means that you will probably not make a lot of headway unless if you approach this as a unit. That's my first point, and that's my first question. The second one I'd like to ask is everyone in this room, as we're here discussing about these potential opportunities and these potential ish, um, availability of uh, jobs that are available, are we aware of the tax implications of what we're doing here? Are we aware that some of us are probably going to be forcibly registered for VAT without even knowing it? Do we know the tax implications of having a joint venture agreement with a foreign national? Are we aware of the withholding tax implications? And if not, can, as a group, we try and do something about that so that we maintain a clean tax record? Thanks very much. Okay, so uh, just one last question here, and then we can get into some answers. Thank you. Uh, I'm Kunda Bryan, and I am a business development officer representing ATRO, engineering and management, though many of you may have known us by our previous name, Mort McDonald, Uganda. Yeah, it's a public service announcement. <laughs> uh, we changed you will name. have to pay for it, huh? <laughs> this is not the forum for it. Yes. Please go ahead. Um, 
I have two questions. You said one question per person, so I split them. No, 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 no. <laughs> to different one people. One question per individual. Per individual. You, you being the individual. Ah, yes. I thought per individual. No, 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 no. <laughs> ah. And now you're forcing me to pick. Uh, can I keep one for the next round? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, the first question I will direct to Sinok and uh, Petroleum Authority can also probably weigh in here. We have been talking about national content and, and that seems to be the song of the day and the direction that we're all going. Everyone has mentioned how it is important. But in my experience uh, with previous bits uh, that I have submitted, the waiting on the bid, uh, you find that about 60% is on the CVs and the qualifications of the team. Now, most of the people with the sufficient experience who have, I'll use the example of a previous, a recent bid where you need experience of about 14 bridges that you must have designed and constructed. And you're looking through the Ugandan team and there's no one who has that experience, but the waiting on the CVs accounts for 60% when you're being evaluated. So my question is, how can we say we are promoting national content, yet the waiting of our evaluation criteria is still skewed towards the international uh, or multinational companies? Thank you very much. I think I think just ask your second question. It, it might be it might be interesting one because I, I I see you you're asking very intelligent questions. Just uh, just as a just, just, just I just wanted to know who is it directed to? Your question. The second question. No, the, the first one. Oh, the first one. Yeah. I Sinok. Sinok. Okay, the second yes. one. Yes. Now, the second question is about the joint venture, yes. which uh, many people have spoken about and we have really pushed the joint venture as the solution to not having the capacity either financially or experience wise but my question is is the joint venture really the solution if we are planning to grow the ugandan companies given that as he mentioned the question of what you bring to the table in the joint venture and what you bring to the table is usually what you live with after the joint after the joint venture is done. So shall we, in perpetuity, just fall back on the joint venture, or is there a way, from a, a framework point of view, that we can support the Ugandan uh, company? I give this as a personal experience because, as much McDonald, we had a parent company in the UK where questions of financials or CVs, it, it wasn't even a question. You just go to the system and you see billions of dollars. Yeah, and, and, yeah. But now, as ATRO, engineering and management, when you look at the financials, we look like a startup. But it's essentially the same company yeah. with the same team, just that we have changed name for to localize. Uh, and uh, it was a long protracted protracted negotiation etc okay, stories okay okay so my question i don't we know have... if it was clear okay is can we have a framework approach or regulatory approach where we support the local companies either with banks it's or, okay it's okay Go, and we're I'm, not relying on joint ventures I, and you haven't directed that question to anyone so that's to petroleum authority okay so guys it's time for you to answer those questions if you have been identified, please answer those questions or the question that has been sent to you. And remember as well to be very precise by being very specific and truthful. I must emphasize truthful. You know, this is the first event where we haven't prayed before because a lot of the time in meetings, people pray before the meeting and then in the meeting, so many lies are told. Thank God we haven't done that. So anyway, uh, let's begin with uh, my brother here. Uh. Thank you very much. 
May you remind me the company again, the waste management company? Binit. Yeah? Binit. Binit, yeah. yes. Binit, Binit Services, your partners. <laughs> uh, now, uh, honestly, they said we tell the truth. We made an advert for this transportation. And uh, I know Binit, even Binit, should have got the invitation from Nakasongora from the sales and marketing department. I've been contacting right after your question and communications were made in regard to that. As our partners, the communication actually came out. And to show you that it came out, Companies like Disan, are you aware of it? Uh, the West, you're aware of that as well. Ecosav, all responded. But the response was not uh, as what we expected. They responded. Actually, we only had, despite the communication to the partners, we only had only three that responded. So we would have loved to have like 20, but I think most of them could not meet the requirements. That is what we are talking about here, the standards we are talking about uh, uh, that have to be followed. So sure, the communication was there, and uh, the, even we had an international company that responded, Ecolog. So you can see that to really put it out. So, be neat, you must have got the communication and maybe the problem was the other uh, aspects that you had to fulfill. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next one. Guys, you can put up your name if you had your name or your company name. Um, thank you, the gentleman that posed the question. Kindly, I don't remember your name at the company. Also, um, this is a very big, like, it's a very big um, venture to take on. And that is why it has it. It contains like a lot of uh, no uh, much eh? much money, the five million dollars. But it's cumulative uh, because there's supposed to be three. Co you must have completed like three of them that could accumulate up to five million each. But um, what I'm going to say is, you. I think you need to. You can pull resources with different companies and then you can come up with such a qualification but again we are going you can put in your bids you can come and bid if you can like qualify maybe on others or we could consider yeah there's we can do like a bit of consideration here and there but for now on the standard level that is the qualification but we could consider just Put your bits in if you feel like you can do this work then we can check out and see the competition and everything then we see who to award okay thank you very much next question okay. was, another, was, was, was there another question to ah, you? it was act the action d2 but she was adding on the other one it does not disqualify us we can pull resources together i we personally the cpec and cowek we are a joint venture because we are doing work together yeah, so you can pull resources together, then you come up with it. We don't want to disqualify Ugandans because as a national content officer, I am looking out for the Ugandans, and oh. that's that's my job. I want you all to benefit. Okay, she wants us all to benefit. So let's send it now to uh, Jasim. Jasim, you can answer the regulatory questions. And then there's a question that was attacked, attached to financing. I think Ivan Palamba, who's with Stanbic, you can allay... Uh, my brother Emma Mugarura's claims about uh, the attachment of property. Justin. 
Thank you. Um, I received a question on uh, what are the challenges on uh, maintaining uh, national content. Uh, national content is obviously a song we have been singing from the beginning of um, the oil and gas story. And it's something whereby we shall keep on sensitizing people on what it entails. First of all, even the main people we have to uh, educate or sensitize are the foreign funds. Because they come here, they want to do business, however, they don't understand what national content is. Those are the main recipients of the sensitization. Um, the, it's not a matter of, oh, just because you have somebody, um, a, a board member who's Ugandan, that is national content. No. So we get to, we sensitize them on um, how to, um, uh, which products are, uh, are available in country. Please, if, if these products are available in country, don't bother coming with them from your um, country of origin. Um, if these services or these personnel are available in country, uh, please don't bother coming with them in, in country. Um, that's why we set up uh, the National Oil and Gas Talent Register and the NSD to create visibility. So if you have your skill set, if you're a welder, if you're a driver, if you're a professor, and you feel like you're very good at doing an environmental survey, uh, uh, yes, these are platforms we put out there so that, um, the, uh, so that we to create visibility for the skill sets are available out there. And then when it comes to contracting, every bid has to have a 10% national content um, allocation. And when in, uh, for every bid submitted to the licensee. So all the bids come to the authority for review, and that is one of the key aspects that we look out for. Uh, if there's no element of national content, even if your bid is the lowest, it is thrown out. Uh, so it has to, the bid has to tick the national content 10%, to go through and to, to be evaluated as a best, um, so a best evaluated bidder. So this is obviously a continuous struggle. We shall continue sensitizing people what it entails. And obviously, as in-country capacity keeps on growing, this national uh, content aspects keep on growing as well. Um, then to move on to joint venturing. Um, so I understand you have challenges if, it, if it's a small company and you're dealing with a, with a multinational. You may be wrestled out. Um, however, you should also ask them to, the, to, to, you should be the one asking that question. What do you bring to the table? After you, the one who has come from America, Japan, China, to come here, what are you the one bringing to the table? You, the, you know, you, you're the one who has the, the leverage here. And we always emphasize that, please leverage on your, on your, on your, on your strengths. If you know your, your, your strength is, um, if it's, for instance, construction, and you know you'll be strong at organizing the local talent and um, supply of materials and the like, um, leverage on that. And if you know that they are asking for uh, civil engineers that uh, have 15 years in bridge construction, let them also bring that on table. Um, leverage on your strength. Let them not bully you in one way or the other. In one way or the other, you are the one who is the one most important in that joint venture argument. And uh, why we um, have been singing this song of joint venture is because. Um, just, in, just in, if you can wrap that up quickly, we are running. Oh, okay. Just, um, it's, it, we see it as the quickest and most beneficial way in that terms of securing the, the requirements you're looking for and, um, uh, and, no, and, and a way of knowledge and, and skills transfer. Then um, to sum it up, uh, yeah, I think that sums up. Thank you. Okay, uh, quickly, uh, Matthew, I haven't forgotten you. There was someone who asked about Sinuk. So if you could answer the Sinuk question, or is it Polycap who's going to answer the question? Thank you so much, Tony. Uh, my brother Jasim from the authority has already actually answered okay. the question. It was about uh, weighting, uh, the weight that is attached to national content. All procurements uh, have a minimum of 10% uh, points for national content during bid evaluation. Uh, there is also a concern about uh, experience where uh, some projects uh, require more than 14 years experience, for example, bridges and all that. Uh, each procurement package has specific requirements. Now, if you're going to build a bridge and the uh, requirement is that uh, the engineer uh, that is going to head that project must have 15 years experience, this is a technical requirement that we would, we would not be easily uh, inclined to compromise just to achieve national content objectives. There are also other considerations at technical level that include safety, uh, which is very paramount in oil and gas. Would rather have a 15 year, uh, uh, exp years experienced engineer to handle an oil spill contingency plan than a two year old 
even if the the other 15 years experienced engineer is uh, not Ugandan. So please understand that. Then uh, on the issue of joint venture, uh, my brother Jasim has also spoken to that. And I want to tell you uh, joint venturing, the, it, the seconds. importance of joint venturing cannot be overemphasized. You need to joint venture and you need to know that the first priority is given to the Ugandan company, the second is to a joint venture, then the third is to uh, a, a foreign company. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much. Okay, Eva, quickly. Eva, quickly, just in 30 seconds. 30 seconds. All right. Thank you, Tony. My name is Ivan Palampa. I head oil and gas for business and commercial customers in Stanbic Bank. I'd like to react to two questions. One or two, two 30 things. Seconds, two things he mentioned. One, when banks are touching property in the event of default. And two, he said, can banks support? Yes, they can. And no, in this case, they don't necessarily have to attach properties. As banks, we realize that one, there's little or you have little capital. So we're looking at things like structured financing, which means that if you do have a signed contract, we would then look at contract financing and, and sort of take comfort in the cash flows after you have performed to settle your debt. So I just wanted to sort of say that we're ready to support. One of the requirements I think they put up was a letter of reference from a bank. We're happy to do that. But also to reiterate, we do structured financing. We look at cash flows. So no property won't be attached. If you do perform and you get paid, that can actually settle your debt. Thank you very much. Okay, so now that marks the end of our Q&A session for now. Uh, we're going to take a break and go into lunch. But just another announcement I wanted to make here. Stanbic Business Incubator has been at the forefront of supporting businesses like yourself. So many of you who have been part of the oil and gas story, go and ask the guys who have the contracts right now. They know what it took for them to be able to do that. So it's an opportunity as well for you to get free training and free support. And this support is not just for anyone, it's for you. So okay, engage with us and we can support you on that. Number two, we have an East African oil and gas conference coming up and that's going to be in November. Again, it's free of charge. But just like Emma emphasized, we have to emphasize this more and more. Register early because the moment you think of registering towards the day or after we have set it up, you will not be allowed in. So just remember to register as soon as we send this information out. It's going to be on November 18th in Kampala at Serena Hotel. So remember to register on time. We're going to break off for lunch, and it's going to be a very quick lunch, um, one hour tops. And when we come back, you're going to be given an opportunity to branch off with the different companies and ask them the questions directly. And I hope in the small groups it will be more truthful. So enjoy your lunch and see you at 2 p.m. Tony.
The Kingfisher Field lies on the southeastern flank of the Albert Basin, which is part of the western arm of the East African Rift System. The field is approximately 15.2 km long by 3.0 km wide and covers an oil area of 32.3 km squared. The Kingfisher Oil Field Development Project shall comprise the following facilities. Construction of a 40,000 BOPD design capacity CPF, four well pads, linking of the well sites to the CPF by production flow lines and water injection lines, lake water intake pump station, permanent camp, supply base, safety check station and temporary camp. The well fluid from the Kingfisher field will be transported to the central processing facility, CPF, via flow lines from individual well pad. Crude oil from the two CPFs will be transferred to the delivery point at Kbal, which is 50 km away by a feeder line. Associated gas shall be used as fuel for internal power generation and heating energy. Excess gas will be treated for LPG production by recycling C3 and C4. LPG products are sold through tankers. Produced water treated by oil and water separation facilities shall be re-injected. Lake water is taken in for oil field water use and shall be treated by CPF and transported to oil field water use units through transfer line. CPF is located in the middle of the entire oil field, covers an area of about 169,000 square meters. The factory area is divided by functions as follows, office area and administration quarter, production water treatment area, oil and gas treatment area, LPG storage and loading shed, shared project area. The shared project area including, including power station and distribution area, center control area, public water treatment and fire pump area, public equipment area, storage areas, Oil field well pads distribute along shores of Lake Albert from south to north, followed by well pad of well pad 3, well pad 1, well pad 2, well pad 4A. The well pad is divided into drilling area and oil and gas production area. Facilities of drilling area include rig, mud pools, diesel generators, mud pumps, office containers, oil and gas production area include Christmas trees, wellhead control panel, multi-phase flow meter, chemical systems, pig. Well pad 3 covers an area of about 43,600 square meters, a total of 10 wells, 6 oil wells and 4 water injection wells. Well Pad 1 covers an area of about 46,300 square meters, a total of 7 wells, 5 oil wells, and 2 water injection wells. Well Pad 2 covers an area of about 38,000 square meters, a total of 10 wells, 6 oil wells, and 4 water injection wells. Well Pad 4A covers an area of about 42,000 square meters, a total of 4 wells, 3 oil wells, and 1 water injection wells. Permanent camp is located on the west of CPF and can accommodate 120 people living as well as accommodation, office, living and entertainment in an integrated living area. Lake water is taken in for oil field water use and shall be treated by CPF and transported to oil field water use units through transfer line. The safety check station located at the top of Escarpment Road for security and safety check purposes. 
Fully sail with strong wind on wide sea under broad sky, compose a new chapter with one heart and great aspiration. Under the leadership of CNOOC Uganda Limited, all staff with more enthusiasm, more active state, steadily promotes the project in accordance with the established schedule and high quality. Take practical action to meet the new chapter of international companies' overseas development. In the near future, a modern oil production facility will be erected on the banks of Lake Alberta in Uganda. Company adheres to the win win concept, actively fulfills social responsibility, promotes the harmonious development of the company and local communities, and enhances the traditional friendship between the Uganda and China people. The Belt and Road Initiative benefits the African land. Today we held our supply development workshop and our focus was to provide opportunities specific to the manufacturing uh, industry in Uganda. This is a quarterly engagement that we have with our suppliers and potential suppliers to ensure that uh, we maximize national content through participation of Ugandans and Ugandan companies. Uh, the main aim of this workshop was to educate and to train the Ugandan uh, manufacturers uh, about the opportunities available in the oil and gas industry and how they can partake of these opportunities. Therefore, this is key to provide information, to do capacity development and uh, have a win-win strategy for this project. And in order to partake of these opportunities, a lot of work has to be done. They have to prepare themselves to train their workers, to buy equipment, to do several things, and actually uh, achieve uh, the required standards and certifications required in the oil and gas sector. We've looked at industries like the steel, we've looked at cement, logistics, and a couple of them, which we feel this is very positive. We are talking about uh, construction of things like compounds, stockpiling areas, temporary uh, construction camps. Basically, here we are expecting 100% local content. We don't expect any foreigner to come and supply sand. It's one of the areas that the PAU has put in the regulations that is really first for Ugandan companies. Please take it upon yourselves to read those regulations. These regulations apply to the licensee, contractors and subcontractors. So the licensees themselves, the companies, contractors like you, and subcontractors. PAU enforces these regulations, and that's our mandate. So in terms of opportunities, we have the refinery, we have the airport. Um, we're looking at about 30,000 jobs. We expect direct jobs within the industrial park, say in about year 10. So as our strategic partners, uh, UNOC has informed uh, the participants about the opportunities in the upcoming uh, Kabale industrial area, the petrochemicals industry. Uh, there has been also Stambik Bank, which has talked about the incubator. The incubator is a program that trains uh, suppliers on what they need to do to do business. And uh, it's uh, a very good opportunity for all uh, our suppliers and potential suppliers to attend. We also had uh, Exim Bank, which talked about uh, contractor and project financing. These are key requirements because uh, oil and gas in Uganda is a $20 billion project. And to partake of this project or these opportunities, you need uh, financial support. And we are looking forward to more successful events in 2020 and the other years to come until we achieve uh, the final investment decision and thereafter later we achieve fast oil to ensure that Ugandans develop together with uh, uh, the oil and gas sector. Uh, I thank you very much.
The Kingfisher Field lies on the southeastern flank of the Albert Basin, which is part of the western arm of the East African Rift System. The field is approximately 15.2 km long by 3.0 km wide and covers an oil area of 32.3 km squared. The Kingfisher Oil Field Development Project shall comprise the following facilities. Construction of a 40,000 BOPD design capacity CPF, four well pads, linking of the well sites to the CPF by production flow lines and water injection lines, lake water intake pump station, permanent camp, supply base, safety check station and temporary camp. The well fluid from the Kingfisher field will be transported to the central processing facility, CPF, via flow lines from individual well pad. Crude oil from the two CPFs will be transferred to the delivery point at Kbal, which is 50 km away by a feeder line. Associated gas shall be used as fuel for internal power generation and heating energy. Excess gas will be treated for LPG production by recycling C3 and C4. LPG products are sold through tankers. Produced water treated by oil and water separation facilities shall be re-injected. Lake water is taken in 59,000 square meters. The factory area is divided by functions as follows. Office area and administration quarter, production water treatment area, oil and gas treatment area, 